So this will be the bank game for TSM versus Team One at the DreamHack. Uh, yeah. So let's just start there. Let's just start. Uh, so onto the operator bands. So Hibana's banned, which forces a Maverick. And then, I mean, really, if you're not the best on Maverick, then that can hurt you. As well as it can kind of force your Thermite to do Hibana's job because Maverick can only open up two hatches, while Hibana can get three. So it could be. Uh, <laughs> It can be a pain for teams if they can't open up a hatch because the Maverick fucks up in some way. Or if they want to open up another wall for the Thermite. Then Capital is banned. Uh, it's Capital, very strong operator. He gets the gets smokes, gets fires, gets flank watch with the Claymore, and has a good gun. Then Mira gets banned. Teams don't like him against Mira, so she gets banned a lot. And then if you don't have her in your strategy, well, we don't want to have to practice. We don't have to go against her since we aren't using her, ban her. Same kind of with Echo, and yeah, don't want to deal with her. Don't have, don't want to deal with him. Don't have him in their strategy, so just ban him. Let through. Then Arcus on bank. With that, team one on defense, TSM on attack. Archives coming out first. This is kind of a secondary or tertiary site for defenders. Uh, really, just comes down to personal preference. Uh, I, I mean, personally, I don't like attacking or well, I don't like defending the top floor. I think it's a weak bomb site, and it's kind of just comes down to gunfights rather than overall strategy. Or yeah, really, that's what I think it comes down to. So I don't like that. I prefer open area and archives tellers over the upstairs. But I mean, uh, the upstairs has become a lot more popular over the past year or so. But it is what it is. Then. But anyway, this is probably just to throw TSM off a little bit. However, a lot of times attackers, they now have one lineup they bring, and they just bring that one lineup. And that's what they bring for attack because it works. It may not work every time, and it may not. It may only be 80% effective, but they don't have to risk being only 60% effective if they, need, if they thought they were attacking the basement and now they're upstairs. Anyway, onto the lineup. So Bio is on. So double hard breacher of Maverick and Thermite. You need you need double hard breacher. You need to be able to open up. You need to open up the three hatches for. You need to open up the three hatches of server hatch, the closet hatch, and the open area hatch. Then you need to well not closet but that little office area, in near open area. Then you also need to be able to open up server wall. So. Really, you need, you need to have double hard breacher. Then Jackal is being brought. He gets smoked. He can help track down roamers. Makes sense. I mean, it's big map, but he can help. I mean, if you look at the staircase, no footprints. Great, no one went up there. Then Bolo is on Zofia. It's Zofia. She's kind of a kind of Ash, but Ash, but more utility based than fragging based, but still a very good operator. And then Achieve, not Kojo, is on Thatcher because Kate is in play. Then Team 1, they're running Valkyrie for information, Maestro for information and a good gun, Legion for information, uh, Alibi, which I question, but I mean, really, you bring Alibi for the roaming, not for the utility. Her utility is, is trash. But with that, the. the she gets a shotgun that she can open up hatches, a high fire rate SMG, and impact nades, and is a three speed. So, good op. I mean, good for roaming. Not due to the utility. If you want to just annoy, just annoy the enemy. Just throw them out. Just stage them. Well, no, not stage. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going for, but just throw one outside. Wait for it to get destroyed. Wait 10, 15 seconds. Throw another one. Just fuck with the attackers. And then smoke because it's a smoke. Now with that, team one. Uh, this is, I think that the reason this doorway over here is uh, reinforced is just it cuts off line of sight. So you have to open it up, which gives a sound cue. I don't think there's anything else besides that. I mean, it, it's not, it's not like you can play there. It's not like you can play inside a main lobby now because that's up, but... That's my only thought process. Then barbed wire goes there. Hatch gets opened up inside. I mean, not a hatch. Uh, 
Rotate hole gets opened up inside of open area. That's due purely to allow for the attackers, to, I mean, for the defenders to rotate around the open area. And really, the so it, uh, holding the upstairs is, is kind of hard. Well, not kind of hard. It is hard. And I'll, you're going to lose it every time. So you you really it's really hard to hold upstairs. And due to that, you have to... Uh, you just have to, it's a lot of teams prefer to just do a horizontal hold where they can just run all around this area because they have the ability to rotate around with the hatches and then they, normally the bottom of this is shotgunned out and not a rotate, which allows you to kill anyone planting, but that's just what team one wants. We'll calculate a style of play. We're going to start off with a, uh, a Teller's Archive defense, it appears, and we've got a lot of investment in utility. Upstairs gets reinforced, reinforcement goes there, rotate ro reinforcement. That, uh, that map control, the real estate that is so valuable upstairs. Mirrored drones coming out, and you're talking about flank denial, but there's not really any flank denial other than the Jackal coming out on the side of TSM for their attacking lineup, preferring to take two hard breachers, and that's pretty standard when you're starting out on the attack, because you never know if, if they're, uh, they're going to change up the site or not. Standard. First sight would be down. You can destroy the camera inside a main lobby from outside. Stairs, but it looks like Team One have alternate ideas, as they traditionally do about literally everything. So, always going away from the norm, which again inside a siege, it's a really good thing. I, I mean, it's not. It's a good thing if it works. It's not a good thing if it doesn't. You're not set in your ways. It's it's not a meta like, oh, you have to go to this site first. You're able to really do whatever you want. That's the beauty of this game. There's so many different ways that you can use so many different things. Utility, where you go first on maps to even try and throw them off. Even shooting people in the face with bullets of an MX. Merc gets gunned. You want to really do whatever you want. That's the beauty of this game. There's so it's many different tracked. ways that you can use so many different things. Utility. I don't know where this where alibi is. Uh, oh, yeah, so Luke could just them off. shot. Yeah, just the got the MX window. Storm, but it's gonna be Luka to start things off for it's two. Oh no, Achieve gonna go down as well. Really, this just comes down to uh, kind of the information, kind of window playing. If you're not a comfortable window player, then really don't play windows. Uh, if you want to play the windows repel upside down, it throws off the defenders a lot more and makes you a lot harder to hit. And I think there's also an issue with the actual character model. So it can really help you and just, I mean, if you're peaking kind of like how Achieve just peaked there, most people are ready for that type of peak. So they just have to hold an angle and your head's going to go exactly where their crosshair is. Yeah, that's Mark and Achieve, although his name is Poderman in game. We had to swap accounts just for anyone who got in a little bit late. We got a man playing inside of E1. We're in a little bit late. We're not even. We're in the first round. We're 19 minutes into a four-hour video. We're not a little late. Actually, then again, you just start even talking about the stuff. Almost going for a clean sweep here is Team One. This is a 1v5 to start out of. Only a minute deep into the round, and Bio he will not fall just yet to the MPX turning in response. But it's the Deagle. So this came down to uh, Team 1 ran around and said, peek me, and they peeked and won gunfights. And that's it. it. This wasn't really anything special. It was more just the, I would say Team TSM, the with Achieved and I think Merc getting killed on the windows. Maybe they're not window players, but they just lost fights on the windows, and that, that's all it came down to. It's not like this was a bad take or anything. I'd say it'd be better if instead of, uh, well, they had to have Bolo in his position. I have no idea. I don't even know where the nitro cell came from, but really it just came down to T uh, team one just said, peak me, TSM peaked. They lost the fights and that's it. It wasn't really anything special. Um, uh, it's not like this was a bad attack. It just came down to TSM didn't really have an answer for it. On the round for him as well, and TSM swept clean off the board in round number one. An exclamation point of a start here for Team One and the Brazilians. Well, again, what else did we expect? I, I don't really know what TSM was searching for upstairs. I mean, they saw that there was utility dedicated upstairs, as you were saying, dedicated quite. And it's kind of the thing about Latin America where 
they either are the most they're really really dominant or really bad and there's it's very rarely in the middle where they can just either do clean sweeps of you or they get clean sweeps and it it just comes down to whether or not their aggression works because a lot of the times they take one-on-one -on -one gunfights and if they can win the one-on-one -on -one gunfights then they win but if they don't win then it turns it into man disadvantage and they struggle quite a few reinforcements as well and walk away with a per tap one try to dedicate utility offsite they, they six picked from the cab into castle but the thing is with with Latin America, I would I would not be surprised if they brought a freaking cav. Anyway, TSM, same lineup I think, and Team One, no cav, but they're bringing a castle. And I can't remember who they dropped for that, but they dropped and someone. They will dedicate a metric crapload of it. They really don't care at the end of the day. They will put as many reinforcements offsite just to try and hold back a team from getting exactly what they want. Because a lot of teams will dedicate most of the reinforcements downstairs, get the hatches, everything sealed. Basement defense, I think. Wait, this is basement, right? They really don't care. I think yes, basement bad. defense. Really and these hatches are being reinforced, telling me that there's going to be an open area roam this time instead of an upstairs roam. Which, open area roams, I think, can be really effective, especially in, maybe not in Pro League so much, but they can be if you can roam effectively and uh, rotate around if you have the right uh, rotate holes as well as you have enough bodies upstairs and enough information. I think it can be, be really useful in ranked just because most people don't go droning for it. Yeah, and you, as you guys can see it, right a lot of people aren't ready for it. This tells me right now with what Redux is doing all the way upstairs that they're going to be holding open area. So more than likely they're going to pop those hatches open inside of open area and they're actually going to hold this location of the map. And they already have. They popped open server. Or excuse me, CCTV. Yeah, that's exactly what the castle will scream to. you. Never seen that rotate that hole before. Pick, so. The roam but Maestro and Garage? Vera. Ooh. The initial Ooh, we're getting dangerous flash now. Would, uh, indicate that they're going to try and turtle up and bunker up down. And this is reinforced so an attacker can't just hop in through the windows because defenders don't play inside of that office area. It's You can't. I mean, you really can't, which someone jumps in, opens up a hole, holds angle. Now that cuts off a lot of rotation, especially back to back to site or upstairs or down. Actually, no, you can go downstairs, no issue. And then this, I actually am not 100% sure about this because I just don't know. I genuinely don't know about that. My only, because it can't, it's not used to stop the stairs because you can open up this one. So my only thought is maybe they don't, maybe you can get an angle from outside into open area. Well, not outside, but out in this general area. Into open area. Stairs, That'd be my only thought. Castle coming out will scream to everyone on TSM in the middle of drone phase that there is a lot of real estate being occupied by Team 1 and those hatches will be open. You don't have an unlimited number of reinforcements. You only have 10, you have to utilize them somewhere. And you want to make your anchoring of the main floor much easier to contest rather than playing with all softballs. I just like the play style because TSM forces them I'm really hoping that she just got droned in there. Their, their he, I'm pretty sure he did because considering he got gunned last time he went there, it really, um, uh, he should, their, he needs to know. Bio finished and droning, so yes, I, I think he knows. He may not most know. Of the map and for maybe it was just, okay, one, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't called out that the drone was there. And so he wasn't sure if the stairs were clear. So good of him for checking if it wasn't called out. And, you know, in really uh, reality, it wasn't bad for him to check it. That the, the one bad thing is there are two drones in the exact same position. That's really it. That's all. They just destroyed. A lot of these gunfights that they get together initially. So with this playstyle where they're locking down most of the map and forcing TSM to have to try and take it away from them, it really plays into what they're trying to do. And this it's drones were destroyed, but I'm not sure. So you can see the entry from Bolo once again in through. Down most of the map and forcing TSM to have to try. Yes, okay, so both drones just got destroyed. And that's one reason why you don't want to have a pack of drones going around, because you you have that happen. And I, that's it. You just you can get both destroyed very easily. There goes twenty percent of your drone economy right there. You're now down to eight drones if no others have been destroyed. Try and take it away from them. It really plays into what they're trying to do. It, it deals right into their cards. So 
You can see the entry from Bolo once again in through ATMs. Lucan looking up to the soft patch right now, waiting for a chief to turn the corner, but the Nitro Cell will not be deployed just yet. The Jackal Track from Merc will come out, and we're waiting for the clear to come out onto the main floor now. As they start the majority of top floor, they have that control, but they have to make the rotations downward. These reinforced, the, or sorry, stock hatches will prolong the endeavor, and Bolo will claim his first kill on land. She turns the corner and tries to go for two, but a beautiful reaction. Control, but they have to make the rotation. So Thermite's trying to open up the hatch now. Downward. He's re Perez Reduct got shot there, but it is what it is. Uh, just some Merc just shot through the wall. Actually, no, I don't think that was Merc. I don't know who that was, but it was Sorry. Stock hatches will prolong Then Bolo the kills the castle. I'm not sure where that came from. Because I don't know if he was being tracked or if Rise is the only one who's been tracked so far, but... Really, Ryze just probably lost a gunfight or wasn't paying attention since Bolo's at full HP. Misses some two. shots, loses the gunfight. Beautiful reaction from Luke as he's being jackal tracked in the elevator. Now, Luke needs to get out of there because it's not that he has to get out of that. One, he should want to get out of that area. However, with the, uh, the hatch, the. the Claw, uh, not the hatch. The uh, the elevator he was in, the soft hatch, the the top hatch was soft. It had a it had the hatch on top. So if that's opened up, then he has nowhere to run. Holding Especially with Merc just holding an angle. And down to 20 HP, Luke will continue to battle it out with Merc in between these railings. He All right, good. Stall for time now as Gadinia will come over and pop the hatch for him. They'll bail back to site. This is good teamwork. The endeavor, but they trade out Bolo. Another one for Reduct on the fallback and beautiful from Team. Reduct kills kills Bio the Maverick. Try and stall for time now as Gadinia will come over and pop the hatch for him. They'll bail back to site. They lose one in the endeavor, but they trade out Bolo. Another one for Reduct. No idea where. Probably. No, Reduct is still in open area. Okay. Maybe got the, got the kill on the hatch. So this is the strength of Latin America. Their ability to just run around. If you let them do this, they, are, they, are incredible, they can be incredibly dominant. If you can shut it down... Then they are incredibly weak. Victim that's going to be achieved yet again. Impossible too here. Tries to rotate away, but Crusher. Sight and TSM pretty shoddy right now. His Redux already reflanking, and he's going to be able to find his first victim that's going to be achieved yet again. Impossible too here. Tries to rotate away. All right, so Crusher gets killed there. Away, but Crusher will actually be on the delivery. All right, two v three now. So. Two remaining left for TSM. And this is the thing about Team One. They will constantly send somebody to poke at you. You're never you can never feel safe. So with uh Yeah, it the thing I'm trying to think about this because the this running around it works at times, but if people can hold the proper flanks or know it's gonna happen then they can shut it down pretty easily. So it's it's kind of something that it works at times, but it also can get Team 1 gunned. With any of these but it, well, I don't know, because it, none of this is real. This is more just Team 1's running around and TSM's falling into it. Where if TSM, I think that if they, if they dry, run, dry ran more expecting this, they could probably just... They could probably figure out, okay, how are they going to react? How are they going to roam? How are they going to do this? And it would probably help a bit. Here, this is massive. You still have falls but it's, inside a it's hard to say. Weirdly, but nonetheless, even with this hatch open, he can still contest from inside a server. Smoke's coming out from Merc a little preemptively here. They're going to drop in. To no, 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 bad Merc. Inside a server, okay. Weirdly, but nonetheless, so, even with this plant's about to come down. I mean, they're probably going to go for the plant here. Mark throws one smoke. Hmm. Well, I guess that's the only angle they can shoot us from. But you know what? I don't gotta worry about this second smoke. We drop in. Ignoring servers, smokes in server. No droning. Bad, bad peak from smoke. Okay. So good from here for recognizing this and getting the kill. Who gets the kill? And says, I'm a peak with my shoddy. 
with a failure to clear pressure from multiple angles as Mark Twist and turns. Now, he does win the fight, however, that wasn't a fight he had to take. It was just a that could have just been a simple he dropped hatch, he's in sight, just hold angles and we win. Because I mean, if you're trying to fight at medium range, and that's about medium range with a shotgun, and they have they have Jackal's C70, which is one of the best guns in the game. You're real. It's not a fight you want to take. So, I say that if Falls played a little bit more passively there, that'd be better. But in the end, he does get the kill. The two piece to wrap it all up. Team one looking extremely strong on the defensive set of banks to start things off. They just don't do things default. That, I think that's really. This is a lot of default. It's running around. Not been able to find. Then it falls by the now, way. Now, upstairs defense coming out. TSM, same lineup. Uh, I think they switch. Wait, did they bring the IQ the first round? I can't remember if... No, they didn't. They have dropped the Maverick because they, they know that it's going to be an upstairs, most likely. I would have actually liked to see an open area defense come out just to mess with TSM. But it is what it is. You know, in all law, actually, no. That just in play, so you don't need to run Cade. Can't run Cade, really. Anyway, Team 1... Nothing really strange about their lineup. Uh, Jaeger to frag, Castle to cut off angles, Doc to frag, Maestro to frag and get a bit of information, and Mute to stop drones. Bayside after two quick kills from Team 1, and then you're back to square one, starting all over again, a man down. It's something that you and I have a discussion a about a lot. You, your map pressure only uh, exists for a certain amount of time. You have it, but you have to continue to apply it. You can't just let it sit there. It doesn't continue to bear fruit. So once it hits that expiry date, you have to exist for a certain amount of time. You have it, but you have to continue to apply it. Now, this is castle I'm looking at because this isn't a normal castle here. And I do kind of like it, in all honesty, because if you put them on the windows, then they're going to get destroyed. You hit them, they're dead. They're gone. You can also, so, however, by, by putting it here, you can't just hit it. And it is kind of double-edged where you, you now can't shoot the window players from inside of the site. However, this also lets you play site without worrying about the windows. So it, we're just going to see how this execution works. You can't just let it sit there. It doesn't continue to bear fruit. So once it hits that expiry date, you have to continue to do Opened up so you can throw n impacts, hits the top, destroys the thermite charge. TSM just really isn't. They're allowing Magical. Team 1 to battle back, gain back that map pressure, and then you're back to square one. You have to try and go and claim the land that you already own. And then hard holding instead of closet with the shield and with the reinforcement. We'll have to see how well this works. Because this relies on someone sitting still. And that am can't do that. This EO defense, obviously the castle will come out once again. Instead of locking And then down, the most curious thing of a map for is Rome. Already owned. A single reinforcement well, there. There is one reinforcement here, but not one here. I don't like that. The reason I don't like that is you can go on these windows and you can get an angle. I'd say down probably the majority of this hallway in all honesty. And then come over a little bit more. Probably can get one on inside of the uh, elevators. So I this kind of cancels out a good amount of the positions you can play. And it, get, it also hurts your rotating ability, so I don't I don't like this being soft. I think that needs to be reinforced. Well, this EO defense, obviously the castle will come out once again. Instead of locking down horizontal areas of a map for a potential roam to hold real estate apart from the objective, this time it's to block line of sights and... Pojo, how are you hurt? Instead of locking down and by Pojo, I mean the of a map for a potential roam to hold real estate apart from the objective. This time it's to block line of sights and 
nice achieved almost said pojo but he'll lose 50 hp to a spawn peak here from team one and i don't know uh, who Magnum's did that on the dock but now he's inside an elevator that might have been reduct on the jaeger uh, he's over by elevator too no clue who took the shot but they land a few decent blows on to achieve so now for the amassment above square skylight here for tsm as they try to I guess get a little more procedural with things. They've been getting a little out of sh out of sorts, out of shape lately. A little stalled in the Tooth hatch is gone. Both walls can be opened. Bellows sure out front. Common position. Isn't glass just the best? More or less trying to handle things from outside as much as possible, and you can do that on bank, especially with these upstairs sites, especially in the lobby area where you're able to cut off rotates very, very easily. Right now, Ooh, now Luke should not be allowed to play here. There. Uh, TSM should read into this and just have someone on the windows ready to they're dome able, him. Trying to achieve that, but we'll see if Luki can. But they don't. They do not know this. Crusher then kills first. Reduct. Speaking Jaeger. One, to flank he's trying to get this actual thermic charge down, but they're not. One one thing I want to say is that. Well, a few things. One TSM from their accelerate days. I think they've actually improved a pretty good amount. Like back when EXG was EXG. I honestly hope they kind of got relegated because I didn't think they were that good of a team and they made a lot of really questionable things and it really I did not like them but they have shown a really significant improvement and yeah really they just have and then picking up new players has helped definitely but then Crusher right here being able to get a kill on the Jaeger that's actually a lot bigger than most people think because if your support players can frag, that helps your team tremendously. If now one, this should be the thatch one, it should be Thatcher's job to deal with that. However, Crusher just saying that, okay, yes, it's not my job to frag, but I can do the fragging. That I think is really, really useful. And I think that can really help in the long run. Because it I mean really just you're bringing another person to frag. Uh, Penta, the not the old Penta, the new, the Penta now. They, at least from I think a hearing from Jess, their analyst. They, this isn't a personal thing. It was just on one of her streams. I think she said that what their their thermite's job is basically just to get the plant down and is to never take fights. And I kind of disagree with that because I think if everybody has the ability to take fights once the utility is used then that just that can that just helps because if you have five people who can kill versus three or four an extra fragger helps tremendously it's one of the reasons why young why eg is so is can be so good at times is because young can frag their support player not gonna let it happen as soon as he can rotate. also if you ever are playing never think that just because you're going thermite you can't get you can't get kills or kills or something. Once you use your utility, you can go fragging. He's nicknamed Fragmite for a reason. Take out possibly one more, but Bios holding the angle. So the wall will finally get open. Lots of shots being sent into the remaining soft walls. You still have North Windows control from Achieved, although he is low on HP and one aggressive angle from Team One. Now I'm curious if the castles are still up here. On those windows and losing the North Windows control is Let me see. Yes. Okay. So with both of these castles being up. There should be a call from Team 1, no, from TSM. Bolo, switch with Achieved. So Achieved, you are going to the, you're going over to the main lobby area. Bolo, you are going to the windows. Bolo burns any ADS here, or Achieved just checks for it and says, if there is an ADS, throws flashbangs. I, I don't know, Achieved doesn't have flashbangs. That's, it's Claymore and Breaching Charges. But with that, uh, they can then destroy these, which is allowing the castle to sit so sit in sight, and it would help. I think it would help TSM a lot being able to do that, Massive and they have the time for it. Castle barricade stalling out as well, because it's instead of Bolo with the range breach potential on the north windows, it's Achieved who only has breaching charges and cannot get in to take care of them. He's oh, they are bringing him out. Down outside of the north windows, he doesn't even want to take the risk. He's going to repel up as well, but Luke will take. Bolo was just looking for an angle, and Crusher. Can I actually see the kill? On the north windows, it's achieved. Who only has breaching charges and cannot get in. So good call from TSM for this. Outside the north windows, he doesn't even want to take the risk. He's going to repel up as well. I want to see this angle. Oh, I think I think Luke just peeked and uh, 
Thermo was kind of exposing himself. At, I really, that's it. So, kind of a little bit of aggressiveness that didn't need to come out. Did come out, and Crusher paid the press for it. And then, however, Luke Kidd is at about 50 HP. Slow goings here for Team Solo Mid is... Team one still pointed at almost every single angle here to fight back at any given moment. They're just trying to find Ooh, timing. the foothold they can possibly get, but it's going to be Poge or Achieved. Initially start things off with... But she... Ooh. Hold on. Almost every single angle here to fight back at any given moment. They're just trying to find... One foothold they can... So Castle gets killed. ...possibly get, but it's going to be Poge or Achieved. Initially start things... Bolo is refragged. Where was... Where were you, Bolo? One thing about a lot of close games is it comes down just to gunfights more than it comes down to strategy. Where there's nothing really special going on from TSM. They're doing... They're attacking kind of how most other teams would attack. It just comes down to whether or not they win gunfights. If Bolo wins the gunfight here, great. Their team, TSM, is probably going to win it as it's a 4-2. However, if he loses, 3-3, which he did. Initially start things off Bolo tried to come in through the main lobby. Uh, when the plant's going down, you want someone to go in through the main lobby. Or when the plant has just finished going down, you have the person repelling outside, of the, outside the front just to come in for a late flank. And that's just there because if he stays on those windows and... One or two people get gunned on from your team. He can't help the diffuser. He cannot help the planter. So it, it puts him more at risk, but it then allows him to actually react to what the defenders do. Kadena with the refresh. That's going to be Bolo down outside. No more concussions, and they're going to continue to tack on as Falls is there and Falls. Okay, so one dies. They could possibly get, but it's going to be Poge or Achieved. Initially start things off. It's Kadena with the refresh. That's going to be I'm going down. down outside. No more. They know, but Falls, the mute, was ready for it as the, it was in the default plant spot and Falls was playing inside of the closet. There's no window pressure coming on, coming out. I think there is... Ooh, wait, are you... Do not tell me you're droning. Do not tell me you're droning. Oh god, I think you're droning. Yeah. There is no window pressure coming out. And because there's no window pressure coming out, Falls was able to just throw his nitro cell out and then Merc took a close range gunfight. So I'd say this is the big mistake of this round. Being not applying any window pressure. And yes, he would have gotten killed from he would have gotten killed from Lucid. However, that's something where if I mean if Bolo played a little bit more passively or if someone was on the window still, it's just something that it's something you would have to adapt to. However, it really I'd say this is having no window pressure is what uh, was is what cost TSM this round. Falls is there and falls once again with the M590. It's up to Poge on Rappel. Going to be able to take down Luca, but it's not going to matter too much. 40 seconds left. Start watching for those windows. There could be a okay, 1v2. Please do not jump out. Please do not jump out. 1v2 remaining and 10 HP and a dream to keep this round alive and stop a 3 0 deficit to start. But on a Rappel in, you should have falls. Falls in. No information. Falls just gets the kill. Now, the reason I was saying don't jump out. Is if you manage to just fuck it up somehow and you lose the gunfight, it now becomes a one on one and all it takes is one lucky bullet to win. We will keep saying for the entirety of this best of three for anyone who comes in a little late, but it's team one off a huge 3 0 in the first. Mistakes right now for TSM that can be corrected. I mean, down 0 3 is not the end of the world for the hat. You can still storm back with three strong attacks. The problem is right now is team one, like we said in the pregame, very momentum heavy paced team. Ooh, ooh, is this open area? Please tell me it's open area. Please tell me it's open area. Yes, it's open area. I very rarely see open area. And at least in ranked, I like it because it fucks with people. But, I mean, open area just has a soft spot in my heart. Just because I, I, just, I just like it. I just like playing it. I like playing around the A-bomb site. I just, it's a place I can play. I like it. It's, it's just what I... It's just one of the spots I like. It seems like it's simple mistakes right now for TSM that can be corrected. I mean, down 0-3 yeah. is not the end of the world for the hat. You can still storm back with three strong attacks. The problem is right now is team Upstairs one defense is going to come out because 
reinforcements are going upstairs and they're not only on the hatch. Now, you need this hatch to be reinforced if you're holding open area because this gives you control of about 80% of open area. This one gives you this one gives you control of that little office area. Not too big. Yes, the rotates there, but it's not the end of the world. And then this one gives you it gives you shit. I kind of wish they'd go through bank again and just remove some of the hatches, change others. Like if they could remove this. I think if they remove this hatch and the other hatch, it'd make open area a lot more viable. However, you know, maybe we wait four years, we can get to that. And maybe in five, we can actually get Hereford based out of pro out of ranked. Game. Very momentum heavy based team. You don't want to start until then. I refuse to play ranked. Like this, if you're, I guess, aiming to hang in the game. Mainly because I don't want to play Fortress, Hereford, and Oregon over and over again. On the line. And yes, Oregon is the lucky one. They will head like this if you're i guess aiming to hang in the game and that's the objective of every team right now is to hang in this there was a major spot oh yeah and i just come i did not even talk about the operators okay so tsm they dropped the iq because it wasn't really doing much and i don't think they ran valkyrie last round and now they're running valkyrie and they dropped the iq from maverick however you need a maverick because tsm is expecting a basement defense so this actually no i think they're expecting archives they're expecting archives why have. I don't know. I actually don't know that. The Maverick would make sense if they're attacking Basement, but Basement was the second defense, so it's still locked for Team 1. Right now, Team 1 can go either Archives or, op or Open Area, and they elected to go Open Area. Then, with that, I'm not seeing the use of the, of the Double Hard Breacher. Maybe it, maybe it just comes down to they're worried that Maybe TSM, TSM is just worried that Crusher will get gunned and then they have no way of opening hatches. So they just say, okay, Bio, you just stay on Maverick. We need the ability just in case Crusher gets killed or Crusher, because Crusher's on Thermite. And then, yeah. Then with that same lineup, actually, no, Achieved is on Thatcher instead of IQ, but nothing really special. I mean, no real big changes. Then Alibi is coming out from Team 1. You're bringing her for her utility, and by utility, I mean everything but her gadget. If they lose this, they and again, her gadget and windows can be useful. On Wednesday to start their run in but in the end, it's just more annoying than anything else. Yeah, after this, it'll be to the elimination Fellow for the fourth round is outside of the main door. Who would have known? Also, this is a trick to get onto the roof. However, Bio fucked it up. Wait, wait, you can't do that anymore? Oh, wow, I'm learning so much. Why did they remove that? It's dumb. The Dinner kills Crusher, goodbye Thermite, how did that happen? And then Rise is traded by Bolo. Hmm. I was about to say, I was about to say, wow, Luke Kid is playing passively, that's great. So long as he's there, they can't just they just can't repel in. It's great that he's just sitting there and not playing too aggressively. Then he stands the fuck up. Can you show me Rise's perspective? I want to see where this Thermite got gunned from. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, my best guess is that Rise peaked the uh, main lobby elevators. And he was peeking from there onto the main lobby door. And that's how I think Bolo got killed there the first round. So Bolo was expecting it and just won a gunfight. A lot of damage on this repel once again. The north repel from Merc is seemingly troublesome. I want to see if he gets droned. For him. Reduct flanking up these square stairs as well as the will look away at the most inopportune. But that here, this is why you repel upside down. Go back by a second. I wish 
I don't even know if there is a way. Probably is, but I don't know it. Yes, yes, I see. It's still a dead alibi. This is the this is what the alibi can see. You are almost never going to actually. Uh, you're almost ne never going to win this because I think I you can barely see his head. There's no reaction from Luke because he does not see this. This is why repelling upside down is so strong. Inopportune time, but the upside down repel from achieved again. Oh no, no, not like that. Not like that. No reduct. I think that reduct used the uh so Two guns for Mozzie, you have that little M16 looking one, I can't remember the name of it, and you have the one with the weird holographic sight. And I think he's using the one with the weird holographic sight, which has a lot higher fire rate. But because he shot before he was he missed so many shots, and by just pulling down the trigger he ran out of ammo. And that is this is what will cost team one this round. If he got those two kills, that would have been huge. Achieved one HP in a dream left on the repel as Reduct whiffs with that MPX, and now Spaghetti will have to bail out a CEO and drop down. He's gonna go all the way to the basement for a possible service. There's Plank, you have achieved almost said Bojo again, and Merc on low HP for TSM, but a huge advantage here for TSM to possibly stop the bleeding. As you said, it could be possible new beginnings here for TSM as they appear to have finally found the answer, but they definitely found some goo mines in the process as well as biological step on yet another. Oh, wait, what? Setting on whether or not to break open the hatch. It's like, gotta... it takes like a little burst. It's not going to mean shit. Just, oh my God, come on. You already have one hatch open. You don't need to open up. Looks like Team One wants to. Bolo kills Skadina. It is now a four v one. It is over. Team and where is Bolo? Bolo is there. Okay. So Bolo just came in from main lobby. Skadina tried to come up the stairs. Skadina got killed. Every single site here. More or less like a Swiss Army knife. He's gonna be up to falls to try and find anything, but it's Bolo to put him Peaks down. Peaks dies. Was a four v one. Beautiful job there from TSM. I guess recovering and playing off the mistakes of Team One. Their primary that they started with, which was. I want to remember how everyone died. So, from this round, I can probably tell you the mistakes that Team 1 made. So, wait, no. Who jumped out of the window? Was it a... Wait. Found some goo mines. One. Who jumped out of the window? In bracket, that's where things... I thought it was a mozzie but no i am am i i am wrong about that i am uh... oh no my operators uh it's reduct i have no idea how reduct he had 30 bullets he should not have he should be able to get one but he turns away so how that happened i don't know i can't tell you that's just something that shouldn't happen, and it did, so. But really, what I would say is Valkyrie just missed shots, so that that really just fucked them over. Uh, Maestro, in my opinion, unnecessarily peaked Bolo. Then Alibi is kind of iffy on that one, but she got killed because she, uh, she tried to, uh, well... She kind of held a position that she didn't really need to and got killed because of it. Now, she was in the right general area, but she had no cover and was taking a fight. And with the with the upside down window angles, I think it was just a bit of overconfidence got her killed. Then Legion got killed trying to go for a flank. Someone was watching it. And 1v4, you're not winning that, so smoke dies. But really, I'd say that just came... The Every big two well, were just the missed shots from the Valkyrie. And Maestro putting it in a man disadvantage. Anyway, basement defense coming out. And yes, there was one of these before. Flash is coming out from Team 1, which is interesting. And yes, yeah, so with that, Legion, Clash, I mean, you know the purpose of all these operators. TSM, same lineup. 
Attack now is just basically pick five operators you like, and you're good. I don't have the money, I can tell you that, but I know a guy. There you go. What is Ride doing? All right, well... As oh, he's probably moving to barricade up the main door. Open area hatch is getting reinforced. I kind of wish this one wasn't reinforced because it's. I think that reinforcement can go elsewhere. But this time, no castle. We're gonna have the clash instead, which. Again, as we discussed earlier, we've seen Clash used in a myriad of different ways. You can use her to help out your roamers, try to make those gunfights easier, or you can use her to just make her make it freaking annoying to try and get in sight. Really, at the end of the day, it's really annoying to get tased, slowed down. You can't try and kill her unless you have a concussion that Bolo currently has. Other than that, you can try and use Capital. Usual reinforcements today. coming out downstairs. Well, don't uh, need many reinforcements for downstairs. Game again, it's Team One never showing the same look twice. Yeah. You know, I saw that Clash six pick earlier on, the first time they went here, off the cab, immediately through a Clash, and then to a castle. Oh, it was my Mobby, who would have known? Misclick. But no, it seems like they have multiple strategies, and they're going to throw every single one at you in one game. They're not bunkering down, though, as I predicted. They got a Clash inside of Elevator Hallway with Lucas. Look at this. Look at this. This is beautiful, what they have set up right now. They're holding the entire mid-floor open area, elevators, hallway, even the teller's area. They're holding down all of it. They're Top floor cleared to because to one, Team 1 isn't holding it. But doesn't really matter because there's not much of a breakable floor except for stock. So if Legion actually plays closer to the door, he's pretty well safe. Actually, initially, right when he hears the telltale sound... Ash gets open, Legion moves. Or, excuse me, exothermic charge going off going to turn tail and run but this is delayed plenty of time as they're trying to hold things down on the staircases and they still want to peaks misses shots but i don't see why he went downstairs i think he could have stayed upstairs and still been a pain in the ass to deal with actually how much of this site has been lost because i see merc is coming down the stairs up his station on the south stair. Jackal Jackal Bolo and Bio. Okay, so Bolo and Bio have taken control of archives. Confirm the location. Crusher and and Achieved are over by the by the box by the skylight, and it's called Square actually. Mind from Reduck now. We'll slow his progress. We finally have his elevator hatch opened up preemptively this. Mainly, it's mainly called Square because it's in the shape of the square. The more you know. Time from Team One, so everyone can bail out. It seems like all of Team One have all squarey. Both the top and mid. Mid floors. You've got a man playing top of service stairs. That's Rick Duck. Typically, you see a man with a shotgun playing that point blank range, but you've got three members. Oh, yeah. So, this is bad from from Reduct or Ryduct. I'm not sure. Wait, actually, is it. No, it's Reduct. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm hearing Ryduct, but it's spelled R E, so I don't know. Anyway, the Legion should not be playing the service stairs with this hatch being unreinforced. Because the moment it's open, he cannot rotate out. Now, he could theoretically peek and get a bunch of kills if nobody's drawing him out. However, it's very dangerous from him. For him. From TSM now, holding his server stairs to the hatch, looking up though, and everyone losing their attention, but Crusher, a great... Bad timing. Uh, everybody went away. They peaked, he lost the gunfight. It's it's kind of, it's a hard fight Reaction to take. 50 HP, we'll remove Reduct. They clear out server. They got plenty of time, plenty of utility. They were looking to convert on this and make it two attacking rounds in a row. And traditionally, I was so... Also, you see Bio is running the Shroud Charm. Reason for that is once you run the Shroud Charm, you instantly get better. Factual. What we've seen so far from Team 1 on these kind of setups... Alright, Log gets open. ...have a pick or two by this point, but this round, not the case. TSM have all the utility in the world to possibly get a Diffuser down right now. And really Ooh, all they have to worry timing. about is Falls and Skadina. Those evil eyes could spell disaster. No Twitch, but they do have Bio as well as Bolo to try and handle those with either impacts... Hmm. Right, so man disadvantage. However, this is still winnable, winnable for Team 1. They have 47 seconds left, and I want this Clash to be playing a grip. Oh, how a gr I want to know whether or not the hatch has been opened. It probably has, but. Alright, first smoke goes out. Then, Achieve gets killed by the Pixel Peak. Process. An annoying so peak. Ooh, and then Crusher takes a bullet. That is the big one because now a single smoke canister will end, uh, like any smoke will really just kill him. It's so good on him for getting out of there. Well, there goes Achieve, like you said, and Skidini with two now. It, Bio, I think Bio just peaked. 
peaks Skadina again, and Skadina got the kill. This is a long traditional angle from Garage being held. You can see Crusher hesitant to push in for the plant. 20 seconds remaining, the attacker smokes come out, but falls dive from the desk. We'll take down Crusher, work on the immediate trade, but he lost his position up top. That would allow the positioning from Falls to push on over the... Now, if... Uh... Okay, so if... What I... The smoke there, if he had used all of his smoke canisters, and I agree with the aggressive push, I kind of wish that he had played a bit more passively and let Skadina just tap fire, because I think he could have gone an angle. However, it works, so can't really say anything. However, now 2v3, he got traded. And if he had a smoke canister left, then I wish he uh, played passively there. The just threw it and played. Bolo gets killed by Lukid, who is playing red, I think. Red slash gold. Actually, are they surfing? Wait, hold on. Come on, just show me the Valkyrie. Okay, so Valkyrie was playing red and then just rotated right back up, right back to the B bomb site, which which saved his life from Merc. Tries to get the diffuser. Flash is playing upstairs. Doesn't work. So, oh, so that just came down to there was a pixel peak and PSM wasn't ready for it. That's all I can say because they lost two bodies there. Basically three with the plants are taking a bullet or two. So really that that's all it came down to. It was other than that, it was a good attack, good relatively good defense. Because when you were I mean they the defenders killed time, they didn't lose many bodies, they lost one. But that's it. There really wasn't much much special about that round. TSM is adapting to the roam coming out from team one and Team one, they're still wasting time. They get back to site. They're they know they're being good about getting back to site. And yeah. I mean there's not too much to really talk about that round. But anyway, I will be back and go to the rest room again. And I'm back. All right, so on to the next round since that one really nothing special. Desperation. It was an incredible series. Now to upstairs so defense coming out. So Skadina, same shield going down. Probably gonna have a reinforcement here. Uh, TSM they dropped the they dropped the what is it Maverick for an Ash, which I think is dumb. If you want to bring someone, bring someone who can help the team. Uh, I mean, if you, I mean, it, bring Twitch, get rid of Jaegers, Maestros, Mutes, possibly Mozzies, uh, bring Grenades, and once the Ash is gone rid of, nade the fuck out of everyone. Don't just, don't just say, I'm gonna go Ash. I, I, unless you're winning dominantly, then I don't think Ash is really the play. Ingent, who are currently 0-4 in Japanese Pro League, putting up one hell of a fight against one of the best teams in Europe right now in Chaos. A beautiful attempt there for their first game at an international land. They, they fall just inches short. It, at the end of the day, though, it makes you happy as a Siege fan. Yes. You know, it, like what we were talking about with C9 earlier. They don't really get out much, you know. They get they get to go to APAC. I'm pulling up the scores like for that, but you don't really the Dream Hack. True international competition too often, and it's nice to be able to see them, you know, come out of the woodwork. And I want to talk about stuff once I pull this up. Here we go. It's so down. Weird.
don't think I actually. Here we go. Group one matches. Okay. Hmm, that was actually a really close game. The chaos versus father's back. Uh, chaos won two one, but every ma every match went to overtime. And I'm sorry if you wanted to watch those games without being spoiled. However, you're watching a pod review. Then I mean. And then, oh god, MCE has to got, has got shut down on bank. Opposite of what happened here. On here, the, uh, here, Team 1 got shut down on Clubhouse and did good on bank. There, MCES did great on Club, did good on Clubhouse and then got shut down on bank. So, perform well it makes you happy especially for the game you know there's people all around the world that are competing at this high tier of a level it's just something good to see man absolutely so we'll turn our attention back towards the game at hand it's tsm who really run into a wall right now like you said the failure to adjust they seem stagnant right now in terms of operator choice and clear strategy as to how to attack this map and it seems like team one are throwing everyone but the kitchen sink at tsm and it's working out well a nice adjustment here though from team solo mid as they put the ash on the north windows our attention back towards the game at hand. It's TSM who really run into a wall right now. Like you said, the failure to adjust. They I was looking at the DreamHack right matches, how close it was. Strategy. I think the Chaos versus Father's Back would probably be a decent game. As to how to attack this map, and it seems like Team 1 are throwing everyone but the kitchen sink. At yeah, I'm not paying attention. They soon that. In terms of operator choice and anyway, strategy. same rough, same attack coming out. You're not going to change a lot of attacks, especially when you clear from the top down every single time, because you need to you need to reinforce how you do something. You need to do it over and over and over again. You need to be able to replicate it. You don't just want to be able to do an attack once and then never again. As to how to attack this map, and it seems like Team One are throwing fascinating drone work. And TSM. this is actually a really good adaptation from TSM for being able to open up the windows so early. And not the windows, the um, castle barricades. It's working out well. A nice adjustment here, though, from Team Solo Mid as they put the ash on the north windows. Get rid of those castle barricades. And looks like Achieve now is experience on the repel play. Will fill in for March position. And Mark will rotate back over to top square to help facilitate the push into the objective. But again, much better adjustment there. It only takes 30 seconds to get rid of those castles. And Bola will start things off from a. Bola gets a kill. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just yeah. a lot of times people take fights on these windows or they overexpose themselves and they get gunned for it. I kind of wish these windows got removed because I think it's just an annoyance more than anything else, but that's just me. Just an oversight from Skadina. Wait, where is Skadina? Is he in a main lobby somewhere? And he's got Radux on drone inside of lobby right now. Spots the arm, going for the run out, out the door. Bolo oh, God. And waiting, but runs oh, out of no, Bolo, no. With the pistol in desperation and will ascend up the rappel all the way to the roof. Upside What's down. the Bolo hex? As well as and then, oh, God, Luke has come to help as well. This is not the play. Never send this. Okay, just, I would say treat Reduct or Ryduct here as a dead man walking. Because if he needs to... uh. I mean, at this point, if they if t if TSM threw someone on the on the west windows, they can see Lucid. They can watch Reduct for the flank. He's dead. Two people dead. Five e two. Joins him in the lobby. Team one heavy set focus right now towards this north repel, and they've done a good job of pushing Bolo all the way to the roof. He'll head back down now as the drone assesses the situation for Lucid. Hits almost the ground, playing pillar as the cover. Rise will take down Merc to level up. Man count and Bolo still occupied. He's pushing in, but here he comes. Ray Duck inside of the lobby, stunned and still darts away. Bad drone work. Kind of lucky that he didn't get killed when he had his uh, lifelines out. Uh, so that's really all it was. I mean, could have assumed that. he. I think Bolo just assumed that Ray Duck ran away. And when he didn't, he was he was shocked. But he had the he had the mechanical skill to move back into cover. And when he 
he wasn't exposing himself when he was trying to use his lifeline, which a lot of Zofias do. Way. 60 HP as he turns the corner, hits the deck, and now the shots come in from the Aldo. Luca taking damage. Maybe one, this is down. not the fight you take. Okay, this you do not take this fight. This is a dumb fight to take. Three, but he just can't manage it, and that'll be so you know there's two people shooting at you. And it's great that Achieve was able to get an angle. However, let's say that Achieve couldn't get that angle because Ryduck was a little bit further back. Okay. Bolo goes down, Ryduck, I mean, Bolo's down, Lucid's down. No angle exists. Um, Lucid kills Bolo, picks up Ryduck, they both get out. Lucid almost able to be revived here. Achieve playing support on the Overwatch. Bolo has been downed. Bio will take down the downed Lucid, though. So they're able to clean the kill from below. And you still have a member upstairs. Rise will take damage. I think Bolo pick himself up. And then to one v four now as Bolo will window stand. playing I think back to five HP falls darting out of the electrical closet and bio will yeah lock and then it just down, just a shutdown uh I want to see how everyone died so I can talk about it so everyone's alive alive okay so Scudina gets killed without a I mean just bad positioning maybe took a gunfight shouldn't have dies to that then. Ryduct plays over aggressive. This is kind of the issue with Latin America where they if they play over aggressive, it can bite them in the ass. Because they if they win it, it can be great. But once teams kind of catch up catch on to what they're doing, they can shut it down. Because TSM has begun catching on. And I think this is the first time TSM has gone up against a Latin American team. So they shut down uh they so Ryduck goes for the kill. Can't get it. Luca comes to back him up. Both get killed for it. Uh, Merc gets killed on the windows, I believe. Nothing special. Then Ryder gets killed. Luca gets killed. And then it is a. From that, it turns into a four versus two. Playing support on the Overwatch. Bolo has been downed. Bio will take down the downed Luca, though. So they're able to clean the kill from below. So, I mean, really, Lucid and Ryduck played over-aggressive when they didn't need to. This could very easily be a 4v4 right now. However, instead, it's a 1v4. Bio, then... Oh, wait, no. still have a member upstairs. Rise will take damage there we go. 1v4. I want to know... Oh, wait, he was on the... He was on the windows, yeah. So, that just... Over-aggressiveness is what killed Team 1 right here. It wasn't anything wrong with the strategy. It was just Rykid played aggressive, got trapped... Blue Kid came to help, got downed. Uh, Ryduck gets killed. 4v2. Four now, and one stand. extra pick, 4v1. HP. Probably over. Half down. You're able to take more round adjustment. Could have been. Time out comes out. Likely, but a rust to shake off. Basement defense comes out. Sides have switched. Now, DSM, there is 2 to 4. And T1 is looking good. So we're going to see what TSM wants to bring out that will throw Team 1 off because if they don't have something, then Team 1 should be able to just should be able to win a few rounds. And if you if TSM has to win 4 and Team 1, as you know, TSM has to win 5, Team 1 has to win 3, well, pretty big difference. So Team 1 can make mistakes and still win this. Anyway, TSM. Bio's on Maestro. It's a Maestro. Crusher's on Smoke. It's a Smoke. Merc's on Jaeger. It's a Jaeger. I mean, there's nothing amazing about this whole lineup. Bolo being on Cade is probably the biggest questionable one, just because Maverick and uh, both Maverick and uh, Thatcher are in play. So if Team One wants to run them, then yeah, it is going to be useful. Is not going to be the best. Now, if they know that t if Team at TSM knows that Team One likes to have their Maverick play aggressively and go for fights, then if TSM can win that fight, then Bolo's gadget now becomes uncounterable from Team 1 because they have no utility to counter it. So we'll just have to see how it works. Team 1, roughly the same setup except they're bringing a buck, which I don't get. I don't get that. I mean, maybe they just want to bring a lot of soft destruction so they can open up walls for clearing out roamers, uh, applying pressure above or below. Either way, I'm not sure, but they're bringing it. Off as I have. Uh, well, you say that, but here's the thing. At the end of the day, it is your map choice. So you more than likely need to perform on your map choice because it's your map. You're the one that decided, hey, we're going to bank. 
and hey so the pixel peak from garage is being well cut off from bolo i think bank, especially when you're going up against a team that loves to patches exactly reinforce nothing special like we were talking about earlier and at the end of the i just day, love that she is somehow couldn't log into his account and has to play as pojo man i just think about having to go to your coach and say yeah yeah can i borrow your account i forgot my password well, the big thing I just here love for it. TSM will be their play of Nitro Cells. They currently have two possibly selected. Depends if uh, Bolo on the Cade has taken one. He has. This Pulse. So uh, why is... The shotgun. And so, what is Achieve doing? For the, uh, the hatch control as well, but Spawn like TSM aren't employing that same kind of roam. At least the real estate control off the off rip. Uh, that, uh, that Team 1 we're bringing. You know, we saw this pass up barricades, the rotations, the reinforcements all around. Sure, I want to see achieved because I'm confused. Them, they're looking to play this a little closer to site, and that's fine when you bring the case. Right. So what I'm looking at achieved here is he's a pulse. His utility is really strong on this site because he can say when someone's going for a plant. So if there are any smokes are being brought, then he can say, okay, throw your nitro cell, throw your smoke. Okay, hold up, hold up, not planting, not planting, not planting, 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 planting. So he can say all of that. And that gives a lot of information for TSM because if they have, if there's 60 seconds left, then as a smoke, you'd want that, you want that pulse to be alive so that you can say, okay, because if you can kill 15 of those seconds by just knowing they're not planting, then that can be huge. Then... My only thought with him running around is he wants to leave footprints so the jackal has to waste a tracker on him. However, it's kind of a... Kind of a... I mean, there's going to be footprints. It's going to waste one of the three and someone else is going to get tracked, but it, it is what it is. I don't even know if there are any roamers. The first instigator of uh, this battle that most certainly will come above server hatch. But outside of that, we're waiting to see where Team 1 want to go. We have seen a couple of vault drops in recent history as well come out of the response of a Cade being used on the hatches. Yeah, well, as you said, with that Maverick, it's not going to be too big of a deal to try and... Vault drops in recent history as well come okay, so out I of think... the response... Well, I wanted to see this. Cade being used on the hatches. So right up saw Jaeger playing on the stairs here. Drone was here, originally was here, now it's here. I'm hoping that all of this area was cleared out beforehand. Because if it wasn't and Lukia just jumps in here, that is a mistake. Because, yeah, that's just a mistake. There's another word for it. Yeah, well, as you said, with that Maverick, it's not going to be too big of a deal to try and handle. But if you do it perfectly, you can only get two hatches. And that's that's down to a T. You will run out of fuel if you miss Okay, server hatch fuel. reinforced, which so, makes me okay, think that they're going to be really playing server. On the end of the day, how good is Rise Smoke is playing here. Because if not, they don't have a Thatcher to try and deal with this Kaid. And Bolo especially, even if it does come down into the gunfight, the two guns that he has at his, dispo at his disposal are incredible. So... The big worry here for Team One as well is while Thatcher is not banned out, they aren't opting to take him in contrast to what Achieved was running almost every single round, which was the Thatcher. Speaking of Achieved, playing inside a server on the Pulse, his name in game is Pojo Man again for anyone who's joining a little late. He'll be cardiac sensing anyone above. He's got two members of Team One directly above him inside of the square lobby. Luke is going to. Well, what I'm trying to figure out about this Maverick, because I don't think this is the proper way to open hatches, just doing it all around, because I think that wastes more than two and a half of your breach of your charge, so you want to be able to save as much as that as possible. And if you can open up two hatches, that's a lot better than being able to open up only one. Then I'm curious how they're how team one's gonna deal with this serve hold. Because it's nothing special. But it is it is a pain to deal with if you're not ready for it. So, achieved was achieved was in server, and right out walked in and killed someone. Russia wins the gunfight. Not something he should win, but he does. watching a good responsive kill there from Crusher though to retake. And then Crusher, I think, realizes that he can't hold effectively the 
I don't think he can effectively hold server anymore, so he just gets out. He doesn't have the intel anymore, so he's going to retreat all the way back to Red Hall. Just going to peel back there, and you lose the smokes on the side of T1 versus one nitrous on the side of TSM. That's a pretty... That is why if you want to do a server hold, you have to have barbed wire or a lesion down inside of the actual tunnel, or just a little bit inside, so that you know whether or not somebody is actually going to... Uh, you know whether or not someone's going to be pushing there because Achieved had no idea and just got gunned for it. Yeah, again, Team One more or less just peel back okay. there and you Hold lose on. the smokes on the side of T1 versus one nitrous on the side of TSM. That's a pretty even trade. Yeah, again. I don't like how he looked over by the servers there. My best guess is maybe there was a weird shadow, and he just was checking it. However, he should. Yeah, I think it was just a weird shadow because he should know because it was drowned by the thermite, so he should know that it's clear. So it was a little. I think it was just a weird shadow, and there are times when people mess up on the drones. It ha it happens. So team one more or less just sending people around and trying to figure out exactly where they can apply pressure ends up with a frag off of it and takes out takes out an op so good in information. So as we said, achieved playing on Poacher Man's account. Achieved no longer alive. Oh no, Pixel still exists. Access, okay. Which is gonna make their job a little bit easier. To there goes to level 340, not knowing his angles. Do something out of the ordinary or get pressure. Much okay, server wall gets open. As it does. Of a sound cue there on the exothermic charge, but it detonates not Over 40 less. seconds That's left, and I don't think a single smoke, I think maybe one now has been used. It looks like a member of Team One has been dispatched. Oh, if he shot Bolo there, I would have laughed. Okay. Oh, yeah. So if you're trying to hold with, if you're trying to stop the plane with a nitro cell, you want it pre-ripped because as a as an attacker, you can hear that nitro cell rip, and you normally are facing this direction as you're planting, so you can run away from the nitro cell, and it may do some damage, but it will not kill you. Just rise. The Maverick has already done his job. So Ooh, and then angle, late flank coming in. It looks like a member of Team One has been dispatched to push down the garage ramp. Waiting to see what's going to happen. Okay, so smoke is holding inside of B. I don't like that. Actually, no. If he can hit his smokes in the doorway, then I like that. If he can't, then he needs to move over into red. Then Bolo playing red. He can actually play there effectively since the hatch wasn't opened up. The hatch right around here then with that where are the other two Merc is making sure no one comes down the stairs or elevator or drops over near here and then bio is holding garage however rise is coming in with the flank so this is okay so rise is the playmaker here if rise can effectively get the kill on bio and force bolo out of red or just take the fight and win against bolo that will win this round if he cannot, then it will lose the round. Well, not necessarily lose, but it will make it significantly harder for Team One. Remaining, it is rise. The Maverick has already done his job atop server hatch. Don't sprint! He's don't sprint! In, don't sprint! Look like Bio, is ending the Bio has no idea. If you want to hold inside of um, if if you want to hold inside a garage, I think you need some form of information helping you, like a Valkyrie camera or even a Maestro cam. Team One, they had a Maestro cam set up in garage to help, and. I think that's just what TSM needed, but Riser, didn't have. There he falls. Beautiful shot there from Rise, and there goes your elimination of pressure from the back. Bolo then gets the does get the nitro cell, but is then refragged instantly. Was that was Ooh, he refragged from the stairs? No, okay. and both members stacked up a little bit of team damage there Honestly, i think buck is inside of a how he got there i have no idea the crusher as well the plant going down the plant's going down okay so this is uh this is dangerous for tsm and for team one but so i think tsm is making the wrong call here where they're trying to take this these fights they're trying to take fair fights and i think that would be better if they had if they instead went upstairs in this situation because that would give them high ground and i'm not sure if server hatch is open but if it is then they can contest server they can contest server stairs they can then contest the a bomb and they can they can do a lot from there however it's also kind of, one of those it could it could be good it could be bad it just it can go either way and rise holding off any rotations oh a beautiful shot again 
I'm not sure they managed just to kill to down Rai. I, I kind of wish she went for the kill there because even though you shouldn't be padding your stats, you need to stop information from being gathered. One, barreling into the red hall, shotgun point flight crusher with one, Ooh. trying to go for it all, and Merc will wrap it up. Ooh, okay, TSM so the there we go. TSM wins. What happened exactly? So Crusher peaks Rai. What was Rai's health? Ooh, big trades back and forth, but it leaves TSM to two v three, and both members stacked up. A little bit of team damage there onto Crusher as well. The plant going down, and Rai's holding off any rotation. Oh, Crusher, no, no not Crusher. Uh, Rai. So the reason I'm saying no to that was this was a bad fight he took. He swings out a little bit further over here. That looks darker for some reason. Oh, duh, I'm on a highlighter, not a pen. So he swings out a little bit. However, what cover does he have? So he's exposing the entirety of his body, basically to this to this uh smoke and that just that gets him killed and that that's really it i'd say this that one little mistake is what cost well one of two big mistakes well not big this was just little mistakes where rise he he should have either been using use the cover from there uses the cover from here and just hold an angle down like that uh really just use cover in some way that's better than this because it really i mean a 60 hp smoke should not take on a 100 hp As maverick well. and win. Holding off any rotations. Oh, a beautiful especially if it's not a headshot now yes the smg 11 is a good gun but that was really just not the best way to take this fight and then the next mistake the bomb was planted here this with these two stacking up there and the bomb being planted there with no top hatch con cover, that's what killed them. Now, yes, it they didn't have any top top uh, yeah no top control. However, it would have been better in this situation if the plant goes down here. One person falls back to server. One person falls back and runs to the hatch and then worries about somebody coming up the stairs and then rye plays patiently and just holds an angle here and when and when merc and crusher try and go for the fights they just peek if it's being diffused they play passively if it's not i want to say that this kind of really rye was a little over aggressive there this is the gunfight bad positioning from the next two because i mean once again, no cover. Taking a close range fight against a shotgun. Not a smart thing. Point flight crusher with one, trying to go for and Merc gets Merc a kill. Wrap it up. I imagine what would have happened if bomb goes down here. Post plant positions. Would have changed it probably would have been a team one win. TSM on the retake in a two V four of a 2v4 and get the defuse down that is crusher's round right there put that castle going down here highlight reel put that reinforce 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 nothing special exactly feather in the cap for the man right there but we'll tell you one thing another thing a good telltale reinforced rotate hole probably going to be a rotate hole there reinforced there that's something that he also did fantastically there especially with smoke you have to be on your crap because if you're not you're going to use those toxic babes and Unirritable ways. That's the issue. You're going to use them in ways that really aren't the best ways applied. If you see somebody just initially go, oh, toxic babe, that's that's not the best way to try and handle the situation, especially with the amount of denial you could possibly have when it comes down to crunch time. And Crusher played it to a T once again. So we're gonna see the uh, the response here from Team One. That's their first attacking round. It's kind of droned on there a little bit. It went back and forth a very seesawed round in terms of momentum. A long angle from Redox here, just making sure nobody's flying close for an impact trick on the CEO walls. He'll open up both of those north repel windows. You still have the Zofia of Kadenia in behind as well. He'll join him on the repel, and no, actually, he's going to 
off the onset, take down that castle barricade, holding ATM double door closed. So now you have pressure from both sides of the match. You've got Lucid and Falls right now on the opposite side of top square, and you've got pressure from two members of Team One towards the front. It seems like they're trying to pick their poison as to where they want to attack, waiting for the intel to come in, burning about a minute to do so, but they've also got some good utility out and a lot of information, trying to assess the best possible situation to take this from. Well, we are going to have achieved completely off-site. Trying to work this room game as you will rotate downstairs and possibly might go fishing over near blue. But nonetheless, it's going to be team one poised on the north windows to try and gain any footing they possibly can. And an early pick on this site can spell disaster, especially depending on what operator it is. If they're able to pick off Crusher very early on here, this site just becomes a cakewalk. And it's actually going to be a and an early pick on Ooh. this site can spell disaster. I'm just trying to figure out what exactly is happening. Especially depending on what operator it is, if they're able to pick off Crusher very early. So Chief is playing service stairs. Early on here, this site just becomes a. I think that he was on his own camera, and just wasn't holding a safe position. Walk, and it's actually going to be achieved to fall first as Rise. Me, uh, me. That was just a mistake from Achieved. I mean, you you're holding an area that someone can just walk from either above or below to kill you. And that's it. Bad bad positioning, got him killed, and that that's it. Then Bolo should not be peeking this because he can get shot from the west windows, he can get shot from the north windows, he can get shot from that doorway. There are many angles he can get shot from. Well you Now Merc is here. Okay, I don't know what's going on with Bolo and Merc. Could have been using the electronic detector there. Maybe Bolo, maybe Merc was saying, okay, I want to go for an aggressive peek because they're not on the west windows. They're also not on the north. So you cover me and get the refrag. If they come in through the main door, I'm going to go peek the windows. As he was on cameras, but Crusher again. A Crusher refrag is on the falls. On to fall. The retreat now from Merc as he's playing inside of lobby with that ACOG, but the dock will retreat back up banana and make it up to site. So now Luca, the lone man in. Ryduck kills Merc. Okay, that was... Where is Ryduck? Ryduck is... Yeah, I see him on the windows. But now, where is Merc? Oh, Ryduck from the north windows will eliminate Merc, so that's that retreating... Yes, I see Ryduck. Where's, where's Merc? Gog, but the dock Let me Merc. Back up banana and make it up to site. So Let now me the Merc. The oh, there's Merc. Okay. Merc peeks here. Gets shut down. I didn't even know that angle existed. Actually, wait, no, it's it's that angle. The, through here, through there, through there. Aggressive peak from from Merc, really. I mean, not real. Is the the plant's not going down? Execution's not happening. No reason to peak. Loses the fight because of it. Mandis advantage for TSM. So that's that retreating dock taken care of. One thing is that I always um I preach uh playing not playing aggressively and just playing passive now that doesn't necessarily mean it's right or wrong it's just my own way of thinking about it and if you can't always play passive we also can't always play aggressive and there are t some people will disagree with me saying that, sh that you should play passive in most situations well some may think you should be playing aggressively and it's just my thought process with it lose one of your ACOGs you have one remaining in Bolo playing the maestro a little more of a supportive role don't ever think that just because what I'm saying, just that it makes sense in this situation, that's always going to be right. Nothing is ever always going to be right, and you have to be able to adapt to what happens. And it, yeah, so it, that's just all I'm saying. So oh, but no one me for you have to figure out what works and what doesn't work in different situations because you're never going to be 100% right at the time. You don't win 100% of your gunfights. You don't win 100% of your matches or rounds, defenses or offense. You you just, you don't. So it's about your ability to adapt, and you're not always going to be right about it. Oh, God. Oh, let's, let's just watch that again. Peek, peek me. Peek me. And a beautiful shot there. All right, that was just a nice shot, but Bolo playing the maestro, a little more of a supportive role, but no one watching for Skidinia to slow. So Bio kills Lucid. Lucid was the buck playing inside of the hallway over on the south. Uh, 
Where he got killed from, I'm not sure. Bolo's just peeking everything, which... Oh, God, he's just peeking everything. Really just some good peeks there is what killed Team 1. Uh, let's see. So, 4v3. Maestro, a little more of a supportive role, but no one watching for Skidinia. Bio kills Liu Kid in the hallway. Bio is here. Oh. From the north windows will eliminate Merc. I want to see if I can get an angle on where Liu Kid is in this situation. You have one remaining in Bolo playing the Maestro, a little more of a supportive role, but but no one watching for Skidinia. Damn, I'm not even getting an X. I just want an X. I think Bio just peeked or shot through the wall or something, gets killed on Luke. So I'd say it's a little bit of aggressiveness from Luke Kid because you don't really need control. Uh, in my opinion, you don't need control of the hallway so much as you need, you need the ability to not have people run through it. And how you achieve that doesn't really matter. It's more you just need to make sure they can't run through there to run around near the closet and then take the site. I mean, not, and then contest, not take sight, but contest the uh, wall. So I think it'd be better if they, if Team 1 had him playing a little bit more passively. Skadina, I kind of would like to have, I kind of wish that he um, played a little bit more passively on the flank and waited for the push to come. Because if you're having to worry about two different angles and you're thinking, okay, the push is coming down. Well, now Bolo's looking there. Flank comes in from Skadina, shoots Bolo in the back. Stairs. Bio takes down Luca though off of the north windows. And a I don't even know how he sees that, but he does. Bolo, the young superstar, removes it's it's just Bolo. Anyway, two v three now. Bio picks on Bio peaks. Sk uh, not Skadina. Uh, Rise. No, not Bolo. Bio peaks. Rise. Had Wins the fight. Not in my opinion, not one he should be peak. Wait, is that cr oh Crusher peaked rise? Yeah, Crusher, you're the fucking smoke. Don't go peaking rise. Don't go peaking like this. Okay, the reason I'm saying don't peak this is when you're you're the smoke. You can there's 50 seconds left. You can kill 30 to 40 of them. You can force a close range fight with your shotgun. So why are you peaking this? So I I don't know about that. And then yeah. And then Ryze just down to a 3v1 from a 3v4 because nobody's in a refrag position from Team 1. This is kind of another thing about, about Latam, where they're so reliant on winning the gunfights that if you lose the gunfight, they normally don't have someone in a position to refrag. And refrags are really big because, I mean, G2, they literally tried to be, I think, within 3 to 5 seconds of one another just so that they can always go for a refrag. Yeah, that's just the way it is. So, I mean, 4v3, no refags come out, 1v3. And now Reduct, last man alive on top of Square Skylight, looking downward at a... Bad peak. Do not be peaking that. 3v1. No point in playing it. No. Don't need to play aggressively. No comes out. He does have the C70, one of the most statistically gifted weapons in the game. But Bolo holding the hallway will be eliminated with a nice shot of Radox zone. Now do a 1v2 and he's got them cordoned off inside a jailer. One inside a conference. Radox in the 1v1. No! Oh, Ryduct. So close. So close. A really good job from Ryduct there. Uh... Yeah, good angle. Good job from right up there. Uh, so we go back. Bolo lost the gunfight. It happens. He gets smoked out, so maybe they weren't ready for it. Uh, Bio didn't realize he was exposed. Loses the fight. Ryduck just fucks up his aim a little bit, where... Comes peaking, peaking, peak, 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 peak. Perfect. A little bit higher, and you're good. And you're shooting a reinforced wall. And it's over. How much health? 75 HP. Okay. I mean, really, that was just right at 70 HP or so. 
got shotgunned, missed a few shots. You can't hate on him for that. He turned a turned something that was a 4v3 that turned into a 1v3 into a 1v1. And nothing can't hate him for that. So is what it is. I want to see it. I want to actually see whether or not that was reinforced. Oh, it wasn't. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't hate on him for that just you, you can't hate on him for that that was a good try really it was just the overall team won the coordination for refrags isn't there and that's what really cost them that round but it is what it is also doesn't this just look wonderful that just looks that just looks beautiful to me Anyway, well, you admire the ping. I'm gonna go to the restroom again because I'm just drinking a bunch of water. I'm back. M590 Black Eyes. Really just Team 1, they. No coordination wasn't there. That's all it really was at the end of the day. Really step wonderfully beat on the back. That's what the argument here it is. Throw back Hyper on Rice. Think about it for a second. That man dropped 17 frags and still lost a game. Reasoning? There's no backbone to the team. If you don't have that backbone, then you're not going to find too much success. This is not the positioning from whoever is. Okay, well, what I'm skipping because you know what's happening. It's happened for about eight rounds in a row now. Uh, TSM, though. Actually, hold on. Wait. I completely missed all this. Uh, okay, so it's an archives defense. I probably should have gone over this beforehand. Shotgunned out. You can go on the. You can go on the stairs below. Get angles onto all of this area. Nothing amazing. Uh, line up from tsm so the valkyrie smoke dock Cade. the Cade is ooh. this Cade is ugh. let me actually go back to the last round okay ah okay okay i like that i think i actually like that so they they see this lineup coming out they see that there's no maverick no thatcher the pickoff crusher so you don't really need a Maverick or a Thatcher here. These are ways of getting rid of bandits and mutes and kids. However, when we move on to the next round, the three let's see. One, when it gets down to that one v one, still cool, calm, collected. Now with a uh, sixth pick, I'm not sure hundred percent how it works, just because I do not play Pro League. I do not play the custom games which have it. So I don't know. If, I think I believe they get to see all of these operators. Black eye skin. I mean. What other cool common collective <laughs> jokes can we possibly make here? But it's going to be Crusher all the Their way to the top of the scoreboard. That yes. is the different cool, cool, what was it collected. from? It was from a vigil onto a cave. What okay. What other cool collective jokes can we possibly make here? But it's going to be Crusher all the way, and the man's at the top of the scoreboard. That is the difference. We have not seen the support players shine on TSM yet. And you got Bolo, and you also have the man himself, Crusher, on the top of the scoreboard right now. So six pick from Bolo off a roaming objective that we typically see in maybe some of his content creation. Oh, I don't tell me he didn't use a sixth pick. The man himself, Crusher, on the top of the scoreboard right now. I don't see if a sixth pick comes out from. In one, do you do a do you do a sixth pick? No. Okay, that's also a mistake. You want to be using a sixth pick because it can throw off a lot. If you say you show Monty here, that's if you show Monty or Blitz, like especially Blitz. 
then that can then TSM may say, okay, we want a legion. Well, they may think it's a rush. Okay, we need a legion. We need to hold close to the site. We need to be ready for this rush. Or if you show a Monty, okay, we need a we need a legion now. Or if you show a Maverick, okay, don't run. You know, if you show Thatcher or Maverick, okay, don't run uh, Cade because they may they may bring him. And it by showing by showing no no change, that just says okay, you're showing us what you're doing, and by showing us this, we will counter you. And that is a mistake. Is TSM says, okay, no Thatcher, no Maverick, fan fucking tastic. We're running Cade. No way for Team One to deal with it. Professional competition. He did play support for a very long time on an underage team that uh, performed quite well. He has a lot of experience doing so. I'm not surprised to see him doing so well in a support role either. His communication is one of the best assets of his game. And for TSM, like you said, they need the support players. They need Bull and they need Crusher to really step up and make this a complete team. For a long time there, even back in Challenger League before Bolo and Merc were on this team, it was achieved doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Bio would tag in, he's a wonderful IGL, but it was achieved doing a lot of the heavy lifting, putting up double digit frags in Challenger League almost every single game. For TSM, they need to be a complete team to compete on the best of stages around the world, and finally it looks like we're seeing a bit of that. You're only as good as your support in this game. And that, that's something that shines true and has been true for a very, very long time. If you guys want the argument, here it is. Throw back Hyper on Rise. You're as good as the overall team composition on your team. If you have too many support players that can't frag, then you're going to lose. If you have too many fragging players, you're going to lose. You need to have a good mix and good team chemistry of all of them. If you look at the Sonics, they are mainly a support a support slash flex team and they are struggling and then if you i'm trying to remember the another a good fragging team but uh none really come to mind just because there aren't a lot of just solely fragging teams think about it for a second that man dropped 17 frags and still lost a game reasoning there's no backbone to the team if you don't have that backbone you better support too much success rise trying to find any sort of success instead of Who's it? Frags and, and that that's something that shines true and it has been true for a very very long time if you guys want the argument here it is throw back hyper on rise think about it for a second that man dropped 17 frags and still lost a game and that's why hyper Reasoning, left that team there's no backbone to the team if you don't have that backbone then you're not going to find too much success rise trying to find any sort of success in so i disagree with the chief's positioning here one lucky bullet through that window he's dead stocks i don't think there's anywhere safe he can actually play inside of there so I really do disagree with that positioning. Portfolio, but a cheap going to rotate out claims the life of a drone, but able to scathe off nonetheless. That was dangerous game to be playing there for a cheap, especially for a man not carrying a nitro cell, which is a little late like for a cheap. But Merc now, who's been a little quiet in this matchup as well, is going to look to angle in again with the dock. He's been gifted the promotion to dock, as is a common meme from Luminosity, but he hasn't really had much pressure. If you don't know what that's from, um. Uh... I think it, during a qualifier for one of the majors or minors or something, it ended up being Dark Zero or I can't remember. What, I think they were Dark Zero at the time versus I believe 92 Dream Team. And it turned into a meme match just because there was a uh, there were 92 Dream Team. Now Luminosity wanted to go. They were in they were going for Challenger League playoffs and the match was taking really long. So they ended up uh, just kind of throwing. To they, they did throw. They just said, "Yeah, we're probably not going to win this since we lost the first match. So we're probably not going to win the second one. So let's just let's just get this thing over with. So we can, because tomorrow we need to be rested and ready to go for the playoffs for Challenger League or qualifiers for Challenger League. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it was a. I can't remember who had the video over it. It was some YouTuber." And there's a bunch of casters, and it was, it was a pretty it was a pretty entertaining match. So I'd say go watch it. Just Google it. You can Dark Zero versus Ninety Two Dream Team. Probably will find it. Maybe not. You have two members of Team One now pushing in through ATMs, and you can see the collapse happening upon Merc. He hasn't been able to bail out, but Skadinia will take a lot of damage. The support play coming in from Achieve now. Skadinia. So Skadinia and Ryduck just walk in and say, "Give us this fight," and Achieve says, "Okay." 
Look down and finish off by Achieve. He retreats back to the south stairs. They're keeping Merc alive at the moment right now just by applying pressure to alternate uh, pinching points. Yeah. Kind of the aggressiveness of Latin America. They can win gunfights. Sometimes it doesn't pay off, and if it doesn't pay off, it can, they can struggle. Him now. He tries to go up grand stairs. Merck's going to be able to identify it out, and he's going to hear it. They're both actually going to challenge him in the same way. Jackal could be the answer, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Luke's get, Luke is actually going to move in from the alternative route. Take Merck's going to be able to identify it out, and he's going to hear it. They're both actually going to take a lot of damage. The support play coming in from a cheap. I'm looking to see if there's anybody above with the dock. Back to the south stairs. They're keeping Merc alive at the moment right now just by applying pressure to alternate uh, oh pitching me. points. Oh yeah, me. Has to try and find okay, I see Crusher, Bio, Pojo, Merc, and here is an answer, but Rob There's Bella, okay. So Bio, Crusher, Bolo, and Pojo are all downstairs, and yes, it's a cheat, but I'm just reading names. Merc is the only one upstairs, so he he's just in bad positioning. That's what's getting some killed. He's in a he has no real cover and just gets pinched from two different kind of two different angles. But really, I'd say with uh, when you are defending and you know you're by yourself, you have to position yourself where you don't have to worry actively about your flank. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get flanked. It just means that you will be able to react in some form or way. Whether that means you can run away, or whether you can get out of there, or you can, or you can turn and shoot, it or just hide. It really doesn't matter. You just have to have some way of reacting to the angles presented to you. And yeah, Merc kind of is exposing himself to multiple angles here, which I don't like. Where, well, yeah. So I I don't understand his positioning here because with the windows here not being opened. No road, no walls open, no wall open, no wall opened. He could do if he just sat around this general area, he could do a lot more than what he's doing here because here he's just laying down saying, Please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me. And Rai comes in, shoots, okay, y'all lay down, y'all lay down, close to the wall, close to the wall. Someone shoots the wall. I mean, it really just isn't the best positioning from Merc. And then Luke Kid is also pinching him. So Merc right now is going to get attacked from there. Someone coming from roughly there. And then through the wall. So three different angles. And there may even be someone outside. However, naturally, no, I don't think they are. I think they just bum rushed in. But that's kind of why. And so, and so Merc's just not in a good positioning here. I would prefer it if he had moved into an area where he could actively fight from. There, I mean, fight here, there's cover. Fall back somewhere in here, there's cover. But this, this is a positioning you can play when you don't have to worry about the rest of the site. Now, if he tries to go up grand However, stairs, Merc's going to be able to identify it out, and he's going he just to gets pinched Both and gets killed. Challenge him the same way. Jackal could be the answer, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Luke's get, Luke is actually going to move in from the alternative route, takes out Merc, but not before he's wasted plenty of time. And also, in that way, Jackal could be the answer, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Looking Luke's, at Rydux's reaction here. From the alternative route, takes out Merc, but not before. Okay, no, he's looking downstairs. I thought I was also, looking upstairs, which confuses me concerning. Lucid, Rise are all up there and as well as Falls, so. And that works, losing Skadina in the process. Well, now Crusher feeling the floorboards <laughs> evaporating above him. Oh, a shotgun Ooh. blast comes up through the floorboards and it takes Lucid down to about 10 HP, but it's not enough to finish the job. This is Bio now on a flank coming up a square stairs to achieve. All skills achieved. Finally follows. He was about 20 HP. One shot Nobody watching ball. flank. We'll end it. The flank from Bio, unnoticed so far from Team One. They have all this top control. They're absolutely scaring the living crap out of everyone on the objective. Crusher will use one of his smokes preemptively. Bio, unnoticed so far from Team One. They have all this top control. They're absolutely. This is why you have to play this site horizontally. If you play it, if you try and play it vertically, you normally lose the roamers pretty easily. And then, if you're trying to stay in sight, I mean, the number of kill holes that are opened, if you have two or three people all looking through them, you're not going to be able to, you won't be able to actively contest them. You're just, 
There's nowhere safe to sit. Scaring the living crap out of everyone on the objective. Crusher will use one of his smokes preemptively, try and stall visibility, but it'll be through the killed. West. Lucas will take him down. The flank from Bio still could be successful here. You have a 2v4 to work your way out of, and here comes the flank. No flank Unwell watch. Fall. Luca to drop, and now you have the pressure coming in, but you still have this Teller's Archive wall ripped wide open for Bio to hold from south stairs. Bolo will push his way back into the depths of Archive. No supplant isn't coming down, so no reason to play aggressive. As he has two Members of Team One pushing closer and closer up against the soft wall, hitting the door, and Bolo TCSG blasts something to try and. So, wide open for Bio back to kind of the Latin America, America thing of peaking everything. As he has two members of so, bombs going down. One, why is it going down next to a soft wall? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That seems weird to me. Then, why not just instead of peeking this doorway? Why not just hold an angle on it? You hold an angle. You don't get gunned because you decide to peek. 2v2, so you throw away your life, giving it. Now it's become a fair fight. 25 seconds left. And. Yeah, it's now a fair fight because you decide to peek instead of just, instead of just hold. You now have to plant. Bio kills Ryduct. Bio with another one though inside of the hallway. Plants still being stuck by Bolo goes down. inside of Teller. This is some shots. From the back. And this is the story of how. This is the story of literally how one person peeking when they shouldn't. Can cost a round. I mean, this was a 4v2. Now, yes, somebody should have been watching the flank. However, you could have had it. I mean, one, why nobody was watching the flank? I don't know. You have someone dead, throw a flank drone down. I it seem that's just a that's just that's something you have to do. If you don't do it, then you're just giving away free picks and free rounds. And the thing is that this was a close game where TSM they won uh they won seven five. That's not a really dominant game. That just means you kind of had a few extra rounds go your way. And with that, this is kind of one of those rounds where you should win it 4v2, but because nobody watches, nobody wants to watch a flank and nobody wants to just pay, play patiently and hold an angle on the doorway, you lose. If somebody was watching the flank here, it's a 4v2, you say, Oh, this guy's going for a flank? Fuck yes. Hey guys, let's all go peek him at the same time and turn us into a 4v1. Okay. Okay guys, we got a plant. Fantastic. Let's plant. All right. Let's just hold angles. Fantastic. Okay, he gets one kill, but what's that? We have a crossfire. He's dead. You win the round. So this was just... And that's three straight... This is just team one kind of throwing away another round. A much slower, a much smaller. And now imagine what would have happened if they decided to just not have the Zofia run in and die in main lobby because you run into main lobby. Scale round to round, every single round. It seems like TSM have pieces slowly picked. Have left on time. Hasn't had a chance. Sem have the pro. All right, so Maverick's being brought since they since Team One knows that they can go basement again. TSM. Pulse to play in around the gold area. Maybe servers, depending on... Just depending. Let's see. Uh, Smoke, Maestro, and Jaeger. Nothing really special there. Team 1. If they're, run I mean, they're running nades still, so it makes sense to just be continuously run the Jaeger. Uh, team 1. Jackal for Smokes, as well as helping on the roam clear. Good gun. Uh, Ma Maverick to get any cated hatches, as, as well as a to make a double hard breach. Skadin is on Sophia, and Luke is still on Buck. League roster up until last season, the attacking set. Now, I'm going to assume roughly the same setup coming around. Every time, and yet TSM finally seemed to be able to make a read against them. Bolo's running around. What are you doing, Bolo? I mainly feel it's due to the fact that they're not playing into what they oh, yeah. want. So Bolo's just team leaving footprints. Has always been that team that was like, okay, we're going to do us. We really don't care what you're going to do at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we're going to continue to adapt. We're going to throw you different looks. And more than likely, we're going to win it just because of that randomness factor that you're not going to be prepared for. Obviously, TSM going into this and recognizing out, hey, we have to play Team 1 first. We need to figure out how to be more adaptable or how to make our own breaks in the armor. 
And that's exactly what TSM are doing. They're sending Merc out. It, it might be a death mission. It might happen. But if he's able to claim that one life that's important, if he's able to kill Thermite, we saw that earlier, and then he just sits by and bides his time, which is... Ooh. Wait. How many people, people are, are going... They're sending Merc out. It, it might right, be two. a death mission. It might happen. But if he's able to claim that one life that's important... I'm trying to remember who was on the defense. That's right. TSM, they were on the defense on their first basement hold, which they shouldn't have won. And due to that, they had the Maestro get gunned because there was no information for him telling that somebody was flanking. Now they have a Maestro well, cam inside a garage to tell them that. Just... So this right here, that is a good ad adaptation. Right time, waste as much time as possible. It works out. And Ooh, misses some shots. To work out until Team 1 either tries to play closer together for refrags or find some other avenue. Now one thing is I kind of... Okay, so one... So... What I would have liked is if the Maestro Cam was in a position either underneath one of the vehicles, which would allow them to see the see the doorway, but I mean see the garage. However, that would also keep it safe from the Zofia charges. And if they had put a Jaeger device to actually protect. Right or is what it is. Bolo gets follow. killed. I have no idea how. Oh, did he actually come to help? I think Bolo came to help and then just died. Pushing through garage, even contesting against yes, the that's what happened. Information was there for bio, but the Bolo came to help, got shut the down. Android Duck have garage control, they've eliminated Bolo on the Cade as well. This is massive early advantage here for Team One. Looks like they're trying to choke this. Now, good aggression. Okay, so I'd say good aggression because it works. If literally, if bio, if, uh, bio had hit his shots on the first guy entering. Then this would not have been a good push. From multiple angles, instead of just sending one man late, which was Rise last time to acquire that garage control, they have that early pinch. And now it's a split focus. Radoc will bail out as he needs to use that Jackal Inox tracker elsewhere on the map to make sure that no one is coming up roaming. His smokes will also be invaluable on the site execute. He needs to fall off. He's going to leave Skidini in garage. Skidini can hold his own. He's got an M762, and all he has to do is post up behind that uh, that vault truck. Challenge coming from Merc. Oh, Merc, not the peak. Not the peak. Another bad peak. Another bad peak. Oh, this now. is not. This is just peak one by one by one, and they just got shut down from it. Fall to fall on that same garage ramp. A fourth member now will be achieved on the pulse. All five members of TSM will challenge oh, the garage. God. Old Skidini is down. Is the Zofia, but looking prone underneath the car. It looks like it'll be achieved to wrap it up. Oh, he revives himself on the lifeline, but no, it's achieved to close things off. But three members fall in the attempt to. That was. That just really wasn't good. It. I mean, it, you put all five members to kill one person and lose three. Old garage for Team Solomon. And yes, you get garage control now. However, you don't have the manpower to actually play it. So, Team 1, they say they just say, yo, Buck, go below. He, or just, they say, Maverick, yo, you've done your job, go below. Like team 1 have all the control they would need, but we've seen a 2v4 from Team uh, Solo Mid on this site just a few rounds ago. I was going to say, it was looking so good. Achich was able to stay alive, the pulse was up, they're able to feed back all of that information and adjust accordingly. Until everyone decides to peek Skadina Garage. They really did not want that flake to come through at all, and they were willing to risk three people's lives for it. Team 1 have all the utility in the world now, and really no one can stop them except Crusher. This is a time, once again, to lean on that backbone. We'll see if it comes through for them. I disagree with the Bucks positioning. Because if he was up in open area, he can nade. He can, risk three people's lives for it. He can nade the position of Crusher world, right now. now. Really, no one. Actually, no. Maybe that is what happened. Wait, is that? This is no. Okay. So, in my opinion, it's easier from the hatch to nade through the wall. At which point, you already get the angle to have it land around anywhere around this area, depending on how good you are with grenades. So I would have preferred that. Time once again to lean on that. And then you can just bring the, um, you can then send the jackal downstairs. Smoke here, smoke here. That backbone, we'll see if it comes through for him. Well, you gotta worry about the intel. The trade-off here for a chief. He wants the intel, and you can see shots firing up top towards the CCTV hatch. But a frag grenade, grenade comes out. We'll take down Crusher. It's achieved alone inside a garage, playing the long angle shredded. Let's go. From in behind inside a CCTV, the C8 makes quick work of so, this round was basically 
Bio miss some shots, and everything falls apart afterwards. And I'm not really saying that is like it's bad on Bio for missing shots. You always miss shots. Everyone does. So, but it's just kind of one of those. In the long run, that is what cost TSM this round. If they had been able to get the early pick and then say they're going for garage push, then they could have put a two on one bodies and it could have helped. But in the end, they a call was made for TSM that. They ended to try to retake Garage, and they ended up not... I mean, it didn't work. And that's all it was. It The call was made, and in the end, it turned out to not be a good call, and it didn't work. Nothing else really to say. They're on the pulse. So in this round now, we level things up at a 5-5. Five, five. Team 1, again, a beautiful adaptation. Nothing you can do at that point as a defender other than... Now, upstairs defense coming out. Um, my guess is TSM. They just said, "Okay, we, we, we basically got destroyed there. Let's not go there. Let's go somewhere else." And so now they're going upstairs. Then challenge. They just kept losing the gunfights, which was unfortunate for TSM. It was the amount of manpower that was thrown in. That I think it's the same lineup they brought the first time they went up here. Allow. Team one. Uh, they dropped Maverick for the IQ. I guess with the Valkyrie in play, it makes oh, like some sense. If you just allow so you need to post up behind but, the truck, all of your rotates through. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say. It. Yeah, it, it's hard to say, really. I would I would prefer if they had dropped the Buck and kept the Maverick. Or, yeah, something like that. Just, be, just because the Buck isn't incredibly useful here. So I I would long. just prefer someone long else. Long but that's just me. Garage, your main stairs pressure is eliminated, like... You now, same line, down, same, cannot... same setup coming out you can't from team, uh, from place. TSM. I hate my AC. I need to go turn it down because it's either, it's either in cold enough to make me shiver in the summer or not working enough that it makes me. Sweat. Out of garage with no pressure to counter everyone lined up to go peek unfortunately they lose the gunfight but that was the correct response albeit it, it doesn't sound it sounds like an asinine idea to just line up and constantly peek maybe they should have gone two at a time instead of one at a time but you have to remove that thorn in your backside from garage i, I mean but there's different ways to handle it as you said yeah whether it's okay we challenge one but then we have another one wide swing around to try and get that secondary shot don't just give the man ones. That's, that was the main issue right there, is there's like, oh, he's dead, all right, I'm gonna step up. Oh, you're dead, okay, I'm gonna step up. It's just not the best way to handle the situation, but yes, I completely agree with you. You have to get him out of there. We say there is, there's like, oh, he's dead, all right, I'm gonna step up. Oh, you're dead, okay, I'm gonna step up. It's just not the best way to handle the situation, but yes, I... Why peek that? What does that gain you? You have a, you... I mean, it, that... There's no purpose in, and there's no point in peaking that except if you were paid to throw the match just because it, I mean, why would you peak as a smoke at 30 seconds in? So you gain the information, no one's there. Oh, yeah, no shit, the doors aren't even open. We, yeah, we know, we know no one's there. We know. It doesn't even matter if someone's there because we don't have to contest it. While it's not open, plant's not down. I completely agree with you. You have to get him out of there. We saw it the last time when, as you said, I believe it was uh, Rise that uh, rotated down as Maverick and was able to completely eliminate every single member of TSM and just made it look easy. So trying to get that out, but again, just handled poorly. I'm enjoying these split pushes from Team 1, and they're not even going to utilize the lifeline to bu uh, bust open this castle barricaded ATM doors. They've droned out Achieve now, it's the CEO defense, and multiple drones now being dispatched out by TSM. As a minute has been burnt, but I like these split pushes from Team 1. They're, they're rather captivating, honestly, to see the collection and, and to see the collapse onto one roamer. And that's kind of the book on TSM that it has been for a while. I think there is a problem though with Team One with their split push, as the caster's saying, 
because the they're not getting refrags and there are rounds they could win if they had been able to refrag so i think it would in all i think right now team one has kind of given away at least two rounds so they could have been they could have won this seven three at least in my opinion they could have especially on bank is that achieve is your one roamer he's gonna play a pulse or a valkyrie he's made it all the way back to the sun collapsed onto one roamer and that's kind of watch merc right now so all the windows are are still good castle is still the castle one is still in place on TSM that has been for gets destroyed while, on bank. okay is that achieve is your one Another one gets opened okay peak what is the purpose in the peak there? Yes, you can get a kill. However, why would you need to peak in this situation? You're safe where you are. You don't have to worry about a push coming out. You have a, you should have a camera inside of the main lobby that can tell you what's going on. So there's no reason to be peeking. Pulse or a Valkyrie. He's made it all the way back to the stock, although I don't think anyone in Team 1... I disagree with this. Yes, you can get into a position to... You, okay. I, I've seen Geo from Evil Geniuses throw a cam either right here... Actually, no, it was right here. And then, with there, actually peek this window and gun down somebody droning. Either there or there, doesn't really matter where. However, that's, that's smart aggression coming out. However, this, there's nobody around here, so they have no reason to peek this they also probably don't know if someone's on the roof who can then come and just gun this guy down they don't i don't think they know about this person's angle so this is not smart aggression as well aware of this as the rappel is going to come up see someone oh, loses the fight reaction shot from rise the five that was just bad positioning from the five two finds that's just bad positioning from the valkyrie Main disadvantage now for a tsm into the head of achieved inside of stock and that could have been a costly error not knowing where it's The fuck is going on there? I don't understand these pushes. Why don't they just throw one person, one person on either the windows over here or the window over here, and to help contest the main lobby, and then just send the other four to go actually take site? Had rotated off why, why are there three people save his own life there in the midst of rappel and i'm sure he's reaming out the rest of his team for go, 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 now, go, go 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 we gotta run up a single staircase but you bet your ass i know how to run up this staircase the best explosive push up the curved stairs inside of main lobby what's this crossfires exist <sighs> ah merc ready as he battles back trying to why would you throw a actually no i kind of get why you throw a grenade there but why not throw the grenade before you run up the fucking stairs like, think about this. Okay, we're just gonna run up the stairs. Okay. Person one and two, get ready at the stairs. Buck, come over. Buck, throw your nade. Bounce. Great. Okay, get your second one. Throw it. Bounce. Great. During that time, the other people are running up the stairs. And then Doc is here. Well, you're gonna hear him. You can gun him down to one one. Live bullet. He's reaming out the rest of his team for it. Right, let's just run up the stairs and go for fights. The of There's no way someone can be to my left right now. That angle does not exist. He was wrong. He battles back. To... I'm throwing a grenade rather than using my gun. I mean, he could have killed Merc there. He really could have if he had his gun ready. That's the, the wrong gun. HP. Nade going to land, but is actually going to fall past him. Rise claims one. Merc yet another with a pistol. That all to put in as much work as possible. But Merc still have all the stim pistols. This is how you throw. So 5v4. This is how you throw. I mean, this is just. This is kind of back to the Latin America not knowing. as Not being as, stri as strategic. And at the end of the day, this is kind of highlighting it where the strategy is let's bum rush up the fucking stairs into a crossfire we even have a drone droning this we even had a drone coming in beforehand like seriously this is this is ridiculous
it actually, it, I mean, it really is ridiculous if you think about it because it, these are pro players. They get paid a salary to do this, to kind of throw. I mean, if they had just team one, their strategy is just so random and it's kind of with Latin America as a whole that it comes kind of down to randomness to win fights rather than overall overall uh, strategy and better positioning, better strategy, crossfires established, using the better operator in the situation, using utility correctly. They're not doing that. And it it's really showing. It, it, this... Like, uh, like, think about this. So, instead of bouncing off nades, instead of bouncing nades, now we don't need to do that. Uh, should we use our concussion lines? No, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, should we get our claim set up anywhere for a flank? Nah, don't worry about it. Okay. What should we do? I don't know. Like, at this point, I would say fuck it and put someone rappelling down the goddamn skylight in main lobby. When was the last time you got gunned from that main lobby? Like, th think about that. When was the last time you remember anyone being there? I actually remember it was about a week ago. I got gunned and I was wondering what the fuck just happened. <laughs> but... Why not do that? Why not have somebody repelling there, holding an angle on here, so that when this person peeks, they get they get gunned down. This person can then take a fight there. Why not put someone on the big on the west windows? What? I mean, this is just. Up the curve stairs inside of main lobby. Okay, so gets killed from a crossfire. Merc swings out. Doesn't really need to swing out. Merc ready. As he battles Almost back. gets a kill though. I think that the I legitimately think that the is uh honestly whether or not the hand saves him i feel like it does now the drones come out and this can be an explosive push up the curve stairs inside of main lobby i'm not sure i'm not sure if the hand saved him maybe it did i don't know well it gets down damn i wish there was a doc on the team it's okay guys let's stop the aggression merc that is <laughs> okay one how this second nade doesn't kill him i don't know this Second aid should have, however, could... Oh, God. I, I I really want this. I mean, I really don't want Team 1 to win just because of the things they do like this. I also really want Bolo to get pistoled by the doc. I really do. Anyway, bad nade because can't throw nades. Okay. Gets picked up. Well, there's absolutely no way that this that Bolo can get picked up. There's no doc, Doc's on, not on the other team. We know he's not. Him, Rise claims one. Merc yet then Merc pistols Lucid. Okay. With a pistol, then all put Crossfire has been established. How does Merc get a pistol kill and then pull out? I don't even know how that, that happened, but okay. And during this time, Rise is, gonna Rise is pushed in. Finds Merc is down to a 2v2. Bolo is... So 2v2, I don't know how the hell that has actually happened. Literally on one health. Rock in a hard place here for this team. Right up kills Bello. Will go down. It's all left up to Bio inside of meeting room. Both of the remaining players definitely searching to try and get that diffuser down now as you're going to hear all the smokes go off. Bio fires a couple um shots through, but nothing going to make any contact. Just reduct prioritizes that diffuser. He's actually going to eat a couple of bullets as he chooses to plant on now the permanent hard wall. Oh, is there a rotate hole? Bio still a couple of fine as he pre fires through. He's going to tag him up just a couple more times. They're both one shot. Bio on full health. That's more health than both of them combined as he continues to try and battle back. Pre fires literally everywhere, but nothing going to make contact just yet. The jackal gets jackal tracked. Through, and this might spell disasters. They're going to have all the information in the world. He claims one and he finds two. Biologic, baby. Let's get that diffuser done. Jackal track going to come through, and this might spell disasters. They're going to have all the information. In the I mean, he claims okay. So, what team one really shouldn't have won this. It shouldn't have even been this close that Bio had to clutch it as a castle. Good clutch from him, though. However, my question is. Like, hold on, let's... Continues to try and battle back. So, fires. you know his positioning, he's just shooting, shooting. You know he's getting jackal track. You know his position, you know his exact positioning now. 
So if you notice positioning, one, in this situation, if you're at one HP and it just takes one lucky bullet, sit your ass behind cover. Because if you are, I mean, this, this is what happens. Yes, you can theoretically win the gunfight, but you can also lose it. And if it's a fair f fight, well, here's the thing. If each of you gets one bullet off, the guy who can take more than one bullet is going to win it. So he sits behind there. Jackal then says, oh, okay, he changes positioning. I'm going to swing back and get into cover. Maybe I'm going to go here and peek here or just get ready for him to peek there. But no, my teammate goes down. What do I do? I peek. And maybe it's the idea of going for a refrag. However, this isn't really a position you go for a refrag when you're a one shot and you're basically stepping into the line of fire. So neither one actively, I mean, I'd say neither one really used the cover that they should have. And on one HP, I think you should be playing passive as fuck. Times one and he finds two biologic, baby. No, Let's go pad the stats. Go pad them stats. For TSM. Surprise the bio is okay, I will actually say, I'd say that is actually really cool headed from bio for just going for the diffuse instead of even trying to pad stats. Just because, I mean, it really is, um, he has a time for it. And he's probably not going to risk much doing it. There, I mean, could, could be a claymore, probably not, but there could be. So... It really is, uh, it really is, it's just cool-headed. He's saying, I don't give two shits about my stats. I want that win. That's all I want. And now, the next thing I want to see, show, show me Cap, show me Jack. Show me Jack. Both of the remaining players definitely searching to try and get that diffuser down now as you're going to hear all the Okay, smokes. I was looking for the smokes because I wasn't sure if they were used. Surprise, the bio is Sam, hard to do. Tape open. Honestly, just a wonderful display of clutch scenario. I'm looking at the scoreboard, just looking at the kills and everything. Because it, Team One isn't losing kills or in any way. It's just their their strategies are just. They are questionable. They're incredibly questionable. It's really just an issue that... I, mean, I think it's the reason why LATAM and APAC struggle in international, in international play. When even if they have great players, they give up being... Oh, I thought I was muted for a second. Dear God, uh, that would have been annoying. Uh, with that, though, um, it's the reason why they struggle, both regions. Because... They're so used to playing inside of their meta that even if you, I mean, you can take the best player with the best aim, best game sense, and if you throw them into just a group of four other players with no real strategy, they're going to lose most of their games. Uh, I I think there are teams in Counter-Strike which are kind of, they're all-star teams and they end up losing. They lose because they don't have the team chemistry or they don't have the strategy. Uh, then you have, you have this. I mean... To me, it looks like Team 1 are the better gunfighters. It looks to me, however, that, there's, that their in-game leader, though, and their players are not the strategic ones. They're just the all-aim, no-brain, basically. Because, I mean, it's, it's harsh, but it's true. They, tried to, they had three people try to run up the stairs. It may have only been two, but still, two or three people trying to run up the main lobby stairs into a crossfire that is ridiculous that shouldn't happen so it it really this is not a it, this is i mean team one they could win this if they just went to basic strategies if they just became if they if they just if they went onto youtube typed in rainbow six esports vod route now, in Rainbow Six Esports VODs, searched for Empire in those, and just copied Empire's strategies, which are very, very basic strategies, but which work really, really fucking well. They could, and they just copied the shit out of that. They could probably do really well on attack. Now, their defense, they seem pretty good on. 
but their attack, they just seem lost. I don't want to say fall apart at the seams. It was the first what we wanted. Now, basement defense coming out. The same teamwork, even, you know, we've. In one, they. They lost to a clutch on the first time. They won dominantly on the second time. And now they will be attempting it for a third time. So with that, TSM, they are electing to bring, I think it's the same lineup they had the first time. Team 1, they are electing to bring the roughly the same lineup they had the other time. And I will go back and get more into this because I have a gallon of water next to me that is nearly empty. I gotta go pee again. Alright, then I'm back, so let's see how this happens. Match point for TSM. So they, Team 1 either needs to win the next, I think, three rounds if they want to win this, and TSM has to win either this round or then two after. Quiet, except for that round right there on this map. You can see it every time Merc gets it into an engagement. For the first few rounds when Merc was in an engagement, he was left to die. He was just the solo on a Jackal. Questionable, but I mean, he should be able to win some fights. It wasn't going Merc's way. But as soon as TSM make that adaptation to start protecting and start playing with their spacing a little bit closer, being able to play for trades, being able to just apply a distraction to prolong the life of Merc whenever he's in that initial onset engagement, it's been an entirely different TSM and Team 1 having a lot of trouble adapting to apply a distraction to prolong the life of Merc whenever he's in that initial onset engagement. It's been an entirely different TSM and Team 1 have... You check an angle if you're thinking someone's going to be there. You're thinking he doesn't know if someone's going to be there because he's not droning. So no droning is coming out from Team 1 right now. A lot of trouble adapting to the pressure that TSM will bring back to them. I completely agree with you. And another thing about him is we actually had him on the uh, USN desk a little while ago where they ended up winning out against the Pittsburgh Embers. And it was really more or less the Merc and Achieve show. And that's what it's been. They've been just trying to force these wins. And that backbone had not been in place yet. They didn't have any backup at all. And it, it seems like, especially on defense, things have changed. I don't know what's whether Pojo was finally like, look, well, we're going to try and stop being rigid. We'll try and apply pressure when we can and see how it works. But as of right now, things are working out damn fine. Well, Vini's going to take a little bit of self-damage there, actually, as he uses the lifeline to blow up in the castle barricade, and, uh, yeah, this is about 40 HP for it, about 30, honestly. So... That's kind of just getting in your head where you're annoyed at little things and you're not paying attention, so you, uh, so you lifeline yourself. A rough start there for the Zofia of Team 1, who are on the precipice of elimination in map number 1, at the very least. We still have their server hold coming up from TSN, similar to last time around, but there's no sewer push this time, no dirt push. Radak is going to push right down the server stairs, is going to repel right back by that toxic base in map number 1, at the very least. We still have their... Alright, so Luke could... Kitchen, Rise is an open area. Skadina's over in the hallway. Your elevators, uh... Falls is droning somewhere. No, I'm not sure about the other two, so I have no idea. TSN, similar to last time around, but there's no sewer push this time. No dirt push. Radok is gonna... Wait, was Radok always on those stairs? This is Zofia of Team 1, who are on the precipice of elimination in map number Falls 1. Falls' drone. We still have their server hold coming out from TSN. Similar to last time around. I think Rydux was no droned in there. This time. No dirt push. Rydux is going to push right down the server stairs. He's going to repel right back. Okay. If Rydux was droned in, then good. If not, then that's bad. However, he should be holding an angle on that door. He needs to control the server stairs for enough time that a uh, 
for enough time that somebody can come over and open up the hatch, either the Thermite or the Maverick, doesn't matter who. Because, I mean, so he takes control of service stairs, great, and gives it up. Okay, so now the defense can resend, you have to take it again. Much better stalling action, but now Rise will start opening up the CCTV hatch, and this should be the signal for TSM to bail, unless they're going to hold this to their life's end. We're going to have to find out. Still plenty of stun grenades to ded dedicate downstairs. Going to make sure there's no ABS so they can get those smokes down safely. But no roam currently for TSM. That could spell disaster. There's still plenty of time, and they have all the utility in the world to try and get this plant down. They just need to get falls downstairs to open up this wall. Well, they finally can. So I don't like that a hat that the server hatch was reinforced and there was utility expended to keep the server control and without any pressure being applied to TSM. I mean, really, they had some with the jackal walking down, but then he gave it up. I don't like that TSM just gave it up. I think that if they stayed there, they could stop. They could really stall out the push because a minute's left. So if Crusher just uses his smokes and plays... Uh, if Crusher uses his smokes and just plays there, he can waste time. If Bolo has an extra uh, K device, he can just throw it up and that wastes more time. So the I think TSM could waste more time inside of servers right now. Because that was the evacuation from TSM out of server. You can see now three people not now see three people are in servers, which means they they were going for a server push. So if you can stall out the server push, then you then you can stall out the actual take. Poacher man again playing on Poacher Man's account for anyone who was unaware. Falls will be thermiting and the calls will come out from Achieved on that pulse. You still have two Nitro cells this time instead of only one. Bolo will not fall early. So you have a double set of Nitros. You still have two Toxic Babes remaining and the Evil Eyes to use on the defensive side. 14 solo mid to stall this out and take map number one. The ADS is collecting the flashbangs being sent. David, a Nitro cell collects the life of Fall. Bolo right, one, I don't think that smoke is the best. However, that was... That was just bad from Falls. I mean, you can't just... You can't just crawl your way in there. It, I mean, it. You, the reason why the plant goes down right here, facing this direction, is so that you can run away when you know that nitro cell is being thrown. Also, I'm, I don't think I don't know if the smoke here would actually affect the plant going down here just because of the wall. So, I don't know. However. That's something that it's a throw you kind of, you may have to work on where you have it land right here instead of right here depending on the angle it takes. But if it does, then great, doesn't matter. Follow, follow to clean things up and remove the drone that was calling off info as well. Inside of the red hallway, a slow push now from Rise down the main stairs, a little bit of a flank here. Instead of going across, on flank plant watch, going down Reducto, plant going down. The dead body of I want to see how much time was left on there. Because it takes longer than, it takes a good amount of time for an actual uh, smoke canister to kill you. Come on. Oh my god, give me the f***ing time. Five seconds, okay, I think this... I'm not sure exactly how long it takes the plant to, uh, how long it takes a smoke canister to kill you. I'm just pretty sure that a, a smoke thrown on a fully full HP person won't kill you. And I thought it was something like if you can get the plant going for at least two seconds or three seconds, then you can survive it. I'm not 100% sure, so that's what I was checking. So I don't know. At times you may just say, fuck it, I want to stick it. At times you may just want to say, um... Uh, at times you may just want to go, okay, uh, get out of there, and... ...body of its fallen comrade, but the Toxic Babe, the second one from Crusher, deployed to stall him out. Radox still taking a little bit of damage, and that's wasted time there for Team 1 as he enters the Toxic Gas, backs out, and now have to reattempt again. And this is achieved with a Nitro Cell prep, the... So, uh, let's watch this some more. ...deployed to stall him out. Radox still taking a little bit of damage, and that's wasted time there for Team 1 as he enters the Toxic Gas, backs out, and now have to reattempt again. I think there's still one more Gas Cancer left. I'm not sure, though. Uh, Bolo, uh, no, Bolo. Uh, but Bolo's holding an angle. Uh, achieved is waiting with the Nitro Cell. And this is Achieved with a Nitro Cell prep. The attack... 
then to stall him out. Radox still taking a little bit of damage and that's wasted time there for team one. And we burn the ADS even though let's see Maverick can have flashbangs, Zofia can have stun grenades and Thermite can also have flashbangs. So this this these two ADSs here should both be uh, destroyed now. Next thing is I'm not seeing any actual hatch pressure coming in which is a mistake because from hatch I mean you can throw smoke there, you can throw smoke there. And, I mean, think about this. If they said, okay, if they had put Jackal up here on the hatch, well, throw a smoke here, okay? Throw a smoke here. Okay, or actually, throw it right here, because that way it affects both the doorway and the kill hole here, okay? Now, now we go for a plant, but wait, we can't plant here because of smoke canisters, nitro cells, all that fun shit. So how about we adapt to that and run and jump up onto the desk and plant in the non-default spot, which would allow us to get the plant down. That's kind of like a little on-the-fly thing that your team needs to be aware about. Because there are teams that plant on the desk because this always gets nitro cell in C4 and smoke, so... As he enters the toxic gas, backs out. So Luke gets laying down, and this is achieved with a nice laying down, stands up. Not sure why he didn't just come in standing up. Confuses me. Smokes go out. Fantastic. Problem is, they were the smoke. Wait, where's Jackal? Jackal has a diffuser. He's there. Okay. The smokes come out. Nope. Buck wasn't effectively using them. Get slapped. Attacking smokes come in, but ball Nitro cell goes out. Ryduck dies. One, a nitro cell comes raining down. Hellfire, team one. That's a nice shot on Merc. One on their last life. Rise will collect one onto Merc in the back, but a beautiful trade there from Polo. Turn in the corner. Rise will take down Crusher. And then Rise on the late flank didn't work. But being able to position your smokes is incredibly useful. And it really just came down to uh, team one had no idea how to plant in the non default spot. And when the plant was coming, when they tried to go for the plant, they got nitro celled smoke and everything else. But the thing is that Team 1 could have won this game if they had made less mistakes on their side. When it came to things like the strategy, the push, and kind of taking some fights. But that's really it. I mean, it's not like this was really a dominant from one team or the other. It was a fairly even match, and I would say Team 1 is actually the better team if they could get their attacking sides to to follow a strategy that works because that was it they struggle on attack it's what i saw in the villa game against team secret from a month ago or so it's what i'm seeing here still and it's it is what it is i mean on defense it works sure but their strategies on offense it's not working so they have to make some changes and really, that's all it came down to. He, they couldn't make the changes they needed to on their strategy, and they relied on just winning gunfights. When that didn't work, it fell apart. So it's kind of the issue that Latin America has had ever since it was created, and it's one that they're probably going to have for a lot longer because nobody there wants to really adapt to it. I think FaZe is one of the teams that doesn't rely purely on gunfights. They're still a gunfight-oriented team, but they still have strategy to go along with it. It's why they're normally one of the no, normally one of the top teams in the region. Yes, they have times when they fall off a bit, but they routinely come back and they they show that they can perform and in the international community because of it. I I mean, they've gone to finals, they've gone to semifinals, they've been. It is what it is. They're all they're good players. They have decent strategy, and they just lose at times. But it's it's better than what's being shown here. This is just this is really just over aggression from Team One. They rely on they rely on strategies that rely on winning gunfights, and when that doesn't work, it falls apart. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And with that, I'm gonna end it.